ready, you stupid fruitcake. Oh, you All yeah. right, so here's the here. Uh, welcome, welcome back to Break Room BS, welcome guys. Uh, yeah, well, they could have been listening to our other shows like Jen Rosen. Yeah, they were like, they, they were like, you know what I like to do? I know when theirs is about to drop, so I sit here and I just listen and Dude, I wait. Jen Rosen has to be pretty excited. She just got name dropped in ten seconds on the show. Is that a record? I don't know. Jen Rosen, you currently hold the record for quickest name drop. We're going to have to do some research on this. I'm not going back to listen to the other shows. Oh, you're a lazy bitch. All right. Um, yeah, so welcome to Break Room BS, guys. What's the thing you're going to say? Oh, the big issue? Yeah. I'll tell you after our plugs. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so uh, make sure you guys follow us on uh, our Twitter, at Break Room BS1, that's Instagram, it, that's it. That's it. At, at Break Room BS. Uh, YouTube, which you might be listening to us on already, possibly is, is called Break Room BS, and then also Break Room BS on Stitcher, <laughs> everywhere, uh, Spotify, iTunes, uh, just this is about every almost every major podcast source. Yeah, we're we're pretty much like amazing. I can't think we're of any, everywhere. I can't think of any ones that we're not on. Uh, so, we're we're on, we're on Code Breaker. I don't know if that's real. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might we're, be a combination on, like, of a couple. We're on Pocket Cast. Yeah, Pocket Cast is cool. Pocket Cast. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I used to listen to Adam Carolla show on Stitcher all the time. Dude, I never liked Adam Carolla. I, I don't know, it, it was like a nice. It, I would. It, it would be like the like a um, like you know how like on like the Tonight Show like the beginning half is all like segments and like stuff and then the later stuff is the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, like it was kind of like that for me, and I put it on before bed, so I'd listen to like the the comedy stuff, and whenever the interviews would come on, I'd fall asleep. Mm. I'm pretty. I remember him being like really huge when podcasts first started getting big. Like he was one of the mm. one of the first ones to get like a really big one. Mm-hmm. I didn't remember those days. He has a recipe for a really good mixed drink that's named after him. I can't remember what it's fucking called. That's though. exciting. Yeah. Hey, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's vital, right? Yeah, subscribe They'd to better. it if you're listening. And so, comment, comment, tweet, tweet us and comment. We're two minutes in and we're still plugging. Like, come on, Dave. Let's get. You're let's the get one that went on off here. on a fucking Adam butthole right. rant so or whatever. So here's the big issue that I, I wanted to discuss. Us. Oh, and it regards my watching of the G1. Oh, Jesus. All right. The big issue is I'm sitting here and I, I, I'm trying to enjoy the G1. And I, I have it pulled up on my, my G1, my, my, or not G1, my, my New Japan World on my Amazon Fire Stick. And I have it loaded. And then Tama Tama comes out and no, interrupts you. No, no, that, that I actually can appreciate to some degree. Right. But, what, but my big issue is I'm sitting there. And I'm being distracted because I have an ulcer on my tongue. That was a great setup. That was a fantastic You're setup. an asshole. I have an ulcer on my tongue. You're there. an asshole. There's no ulcer on You're my tongue. You're an asshole. Oh. It's hepatitis. <laughs> How great was that? It's AIDS. You have to give me credit for that, that setup. You have AIDS on your tongue. Can I have credit for the setup? <laughs> I will give you credit for the setup at the end of the show. Excellent. Yes. Oh, I see what you're doing That's there. A, it's a bookend. It's a bookend. Yeah. It's fantastic. This way people are going to be like, I'm turning it off. Like, But wait a minute. He's going to give him credit. I better wait two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, I hope we don't take two hours. We're going to hold on to these. All right. Uh, we're going to hold on to these. I'd like to, to apologize for, for this being the worst show ever. Oh, hey, make sure you guys, <laughs> make sure you guys comment. I told you about my strategy, right? <laughs> on Twitter. <laughs> Make sure you comment on YouTube. <laughs> Make sure you send us money. What? Fuck you. We can't, we can't solicit money, Dave. I told you about this. Why not? Because it's so illegal. Prostitutes do it. And it's I legal saw an in iCarly. iCarly said you can't do it. So we're not doing it. Isn't she the one that OD'd on heroin or something recently? No, no, no. no. That's De- like, was it Demi Lovatio? Lovatio? What if I told you I knew who it was? I just said that just for conversation purposes. Something, that's though. something my dad does a lot. He, he purposely heroin. <laughs> what? No. Overdoses on no, heroin. No, he gets actors' names wrong all the time. Your dad has and a problem, it, dude. He, he thinks it's funny. It's just dad humor. <laughs> Your dad has a problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Did you know that Demi Lovato said she tried coke when she was seventeen and loved it? Really? <laughs> She, yeah, where, she, where she you, goes, oh, I was reading about her. It was just one of her interviews. She just goes, and I loved it. And I'm like, that's a great message. Dude, I, I love fucking, like, like uh, monsters. No, I, they're not that great. I just, they're practical. That's that's why I like those. Uh, oh, dude, it's fucking, you need to get your, your maintenance van down here. You know what's actually shit. very funny about that is, in my bedroom, I was like, why isn't the fucking AC coming on? And I, like, opened up the closet where everything's at, and there's, like, ice. <laughs> <laughs> it like, throws over. Yeah, and I'm like, this sucks. That's a bummer. Yeah. Well, that explains all this. Yeah. Um, Coincidence. The heat. 
Um, we'll fend the Kita. All right. So, dude, uh, do, do you want to jump into it now? Are you ready? Yeah, let's do some comments. Uh, okay, yeah, comments. We're going to we're gonna pick – this time we're only going to go with one person this week. We're going to go with Jen Rosen is the lucky one we're going to pick this week. <laughs> of all the comments we have, we're going with Jen do Rosen. Do we have other ones? Yeah, but we're just going with Jen Rosen okay. this week. Um, because she's a loyal listener. Thank you, Jen yeah. Rosen. Let's go over some of her notes. Let her, look at her first note. Oh, hi, Gable. Hi, Jen Rosen. <laughs> hi. Hi. hi She's the best. Uh, Omega said, uh, this is in response to the thing with Styles. Uh, he said that uh, a dream match with Styles, that would be his dream match. Um, she said her prediction with the Juice failed. That's unfortunate. So they're, wait, they're, 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 uh, wait, hold on. What? So they never matched up? Well, I don't think they did, dude. Yeah, because I, I was just listening to someone talking about how he, uh, he dropped a belt or something. Yeah. He dropped the belt before. Like on the floor. In, uh, isn't that like a phrase, a wrestling phrase? They dropped the belt. I've never heard like this. Like he just, he, it, it went vacant or something. I've never heard this before. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's a term I'm fucking with you. I hate you. <laughs> you piece of shit. You know I believe uh, you too. The next note is uh, Jay White, Tanahashi, Okada, all tied in points. Who will take it? Let's say that because I want to get into our predictions at the end. We'll go ahead and talk about who we think is going to take each block and whatnot. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Uh, Tama and Roman are cousins. It's definitely in work. Cabron means a-hole bitch bastard. That's you, right? Aren't you a cabron? A-hole bitch bastard. No, you're not. You're just a bitch. You're not a bastard or an a-hole. Uh, Jenna Rosen also noticed a T on the screen, uh, which was funny. Uh, Suzuki was trained by Carl Gotch, so he does his finisher to pay respect. That's why he does the Gotch pile driver. Prince Devitt slash Fale were the ones that brought Jay White into New Japan. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So he get it makes sense then that they would have tried to get him and join the Bullet Club back in the day yeah. when he got turned down, even though it wasn't really debit were you, anymore. Did, were you watching whenever I was watching that? Uh, I knew you were in the room, but it was that Kenny offering to uh, to Jay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just them two on stage. It wasn't like a big induction. Or, you, it, it felt weird. Like it wasn't a big how do you do? Yeah, it just like the whole setup for it. Like if I was watching that live, I would have been like, "There's something, something weird's gonna go on here. Something, something's happening. Something, something's. This is predictable. This is WB. Like, uh, she's. I, I remember seeing a young lion trying to get Juice's hat back, and some old lady was all confused. <laughs> <laughs> she thought it was hers to keep. <laughs> He's such a tool. Um, and they asked if we can do reaction vids. There's there's a chance we might do some reaction vids of Gable doing things. Me? Yeah, yeah we're going to do reaction vids of you, Gable. You're just going to react to me doing stuff? We're going to do reaction vid of, like, I'll be eating a banana and you'll just, like, react to it. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or actual videos of things online. You we'll see what a happens. Banana. That dude, that could get danger if you if you dangerous if you let me watch. That it. can get danger. Dan- dude, can get danger. Austin Aries still has his banana. Remember when he would bring a banana in WWE? You were you watching when he I was there? I remember that. Yeah, he might not have been watching. I wasn't wa- was he, he was on main roster for a period, huh? Yeah. Yeah, because he left 205 Live, you told yeah. me. Yeah, I didn't watch him past NXT. Yeah, and then the other thing that she brought up that uh, I don't think we've mentioned on a podcast yet is the update on Ta- Takahashi. Ooh. Is the, uh, he's supposed to be out 9 to 12 months with a broken neck. Yeah, so That's dude, a fucking bummer. I heard... I think Meltzer was talking about it or someone. Someone I, I was reading. I didn't listen to Meltzer. You listened to Meltzer, but I read the, some comments, and you can tell me if you ended up hearing this. Um, is that the, it's actually he's out. The the injury it, it will take six months to heal, but with the extensive work that he does, the style of work he does in the ring, they, they're he's they're gonna give him like an extra like three to six to months be safe. of recovery to be safe. Okay. I mean, that dude, makes he, sense. He does do some crazy fucking shit in the ring. Yeah. It may have just been a, a comment on uh, on Reddit. I can't remember. All right. Well, it was somewhere. We know yeah, that much. Yeah. Whatever. The comment existed. You so, didn't. You didn't fabricate it. No, I'm not smart enough to fabricate it's something like that. There's definitely a basis in real life for this <laughs> comment. All right. So this this week's gonna be a little different uh, because Gable's vagina was bleeding this week. He could only do one night of review. Is this the how the schedule worked? Yeah, out? yeah, that too. That too. And I did a. I, I got three on here. Um, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave impresses me all the time with this I'm, shit. I'm great. I'm so great. Does it mean I have to take one of your nights, or are, you, or are we still just st- sticking even? There still? aren't any nights for you to take now. After this is just one more night in the two finals. Really? Or the two? Uh, yeah, the two. I guess they're not called the finals, but the last two shows. What are, what the fuck am I supposed to watch last? Uh, you have to watch one normal show, and then we're each splitting. Remember the last big shows? We're each doing one of those. Dude, I remember the big show. He was fucking huge. 
Dude, he got he got beefcake. He, dude, he was in uh, one of my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, Jingle all the way. Dude, he can make his wiener grow really fast just by thinking for a second. Like, uh, dude, kind of like uh, the fucking dude from the Justice League show. I was going with Zach and Mary make a porno, but very similar, yes. Yeah, like the, the Apache <laughs> Chief or whatever his name is. He makes his wiener grow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just, just thinking and he would get real big. Huh. I have a question for you. What happens if the Hulk is fucking some chick and Hulk's up in mid-intercourse? Dude, he can't... It would start with that. That's the whole premise of... At least You're telling me that he can't even get his dick hard, even if he, like, focuses and meditates without hulking up. I find that hard to believe. Dude, I don't know. I'm gonna, next time I get a boner, I'm going to check my heart rate and see how high it gets to see how, hey, how they how need they some scientist on this. We do. Someone fact checked this. Now, now to, to change subjects in a very smooth transition, Incredible Hulk penis, night 12, go. Uh, is, is that my first one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I okay. believe so. It's got to be. Uh, are you playing our, our music right now? Do, 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 do. Christopher Robin didn't do that well this weekend. Came in number two to Mission Possible. That's surprising. Mr. Robin. Poo. Remember when I said poo to a customer? That was really funny. Um, okay, I just forgot the header. I got scared that I deleted it. I you did, said head. I just didn't put a header on it. Header. Header. Header footer. Let's do this. All right. First up, we got Tama ver- uh, Tama Tonga versus Ishii. This is A block, right? Or um, wait, B block. Tama is a, Tama's Ta- B block. Tama's, yeah, B block with Kenny. This is B block night 12. Yes. Uh, let's see. My first is the announcers were really good at selling the OG Bullet Club mentality and angle. Talking about Carl Anderson and how um, he was, uh, and, and how like hostile they were. Um, and how the, the Tongas are really bringing that mentality back to uh, the Bullet Club. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, it's like, this isn't the first time they did this shit with all the interference stuff. This is, it's kind of funny that people complain that the OGs are doing what the original Bullet Club did, <laughs> but whatever. Funny. I mean, I wasn't watching it at the time, but I mean, I always, in the highlights I always saw of, like, this old shit, like, this seemed to be what the fuck they did all yeah, the time. I didn't watch either, but I, I was definitely, I definitely know that is what they did. I was... Um, I rem- Bible source told me. I remember you uh, talking about it was who was it, Ishii and someone else like no selling a lot. Yeah. I- Ibushi was that right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what that's the match. It was. Ishii and Ibushi no selling a lot. Uh, you, you still see a lot of the no selling from I- Ishii, and I think that's uh, definitely an Ishii type thing. Okay, I- I'm gonna get into that in one of mine, and I don't have an issue with that. Yeah, for yeah, the most part because he's the stone pit pitfall, and it's kind of like the equivalent of having like a stone face when getting hit. Yeah, dude, right? it's like the Undertaker. Yeah, the Undertaker's whole character is the dead man, and like he does, he knows all stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's becoming as we're getting adjusted to the characters a more natural thing for them to do. Well, specific characters. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Tonga Loa attacks Ishii with a chair, no. and they're both hanging up uh, on him, but Ishii. Oh wait, dude! I, I I forgot to do the thing before we started this. You're kidding me? No, I I, I I'm not. Cable. Um, they're they're both hanging on him, but Ishii fights them off for a bit, but ultimately leads to a Tonga twist. Ref, he pauses. I'm sorry. Um, all right. All right, here we are. Uh, We're back, Gable. So what part I'd leave off on? Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, bad luck. Uh, not a lot going on in this match with the, especially all these Tongan matches. They're they're just mainly either DQs or or whatever. You know what I mean? I don't know about that. What? You're being a dick. Now. I am. You, you just agree with me a second ago. You're not making this this move very smoothly. <coughs> no, you got some nerve. Get, get me. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're not you're not helping. I, this is something I just fucked up on. You're making it worse. Um, yeah, that's fine. I'm not making it worse. Uh, yeah. So I mean, not a lot of notable stuff in this match. Uh, Bad luck does a grenade towards the end and throws Tonga Tonga uh, Tama Tonga uh, on top of him. Uh, this is while Tonga is not like I don't want to say unconscious, but he's knocked out and. Uh, just gets ragdolled for a pin, but uh, we get a good false finish there whenever uh, Ishii comes to life out of nowhere. Um, let's see. 
the match later on ends up uh, whenever, uh, let's see, Tonga reverses a brain buster with a stun gun while he's up in like the vertical position of the brain buster. I think I watched this one. Yeah, it was a really cool uh, reversal. Yeah. Um, well, it's it's something I could see like Naito doing with his like Destinos, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's probably one of the cooler th- moves I've seen out of one of these Tonga matches. Uh, so Tonga, Tonga won. Tonga, Tonga, Tonga won. Did he? He actually won? Yes, sir. Jesus. This is shocking. Shocking, yes. All right. Uh, next. Who did he fight? What? Oh, uh, Ishii, that's right. Ishii, yeah. There you Um, you're mad at me, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> you suck. I'm sorry. Um, second, second match of the night, we have Sonata up against Juice. Juice um, who? Juice, Juice the Robinson. Ah, okay, the Robinson one. of Juice. You didn't say Sonata who. It's, it's, <laughs> he doesn't have a full name. No one likes Sonata. Sonata. Isn't it? Tets, is that the one that's Tetsuya? No, it's it's uh, Johnson. Uh, that's weird. <laughs> there was another Tetsuya. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> it was Johnson. Sonata Johnson. So mismatched. Juice Johnson. <laughs> Juice Johnson. Well, Robinson's not that. Not that. No, that. Uh, yeah, but dinner. Johnson can mean dick. Johnson. Robinson can't. Johnson's another name for wieners. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. Not uh, another match where there's not a lot of noteworthy stuff. We got a. Uh, you know what I'm noticing is I think it's causing this. What? Like when we first started, I think both of us had a lot more notes for each one. Like as you're watching these singles matches, you're seeing you're not like oh that move that move yeah because you've it, seen it a number of times already yeah. So now it's just like I don't want to keep noting oh he did the power bomb into the turnbuckle or he yeah. did a bu-. you know what I mean yeah like, that's a bad example because I have a note about that but. But, um, yeah, I think that's what it is, because as I was watching some of them, just, like, I, I started coming up with different ways of saying, and you'll notice in the one that they're having a wrestling match, <laughs> you, you got, I just kept using different ways of saying it. You got your wrestling th- thesaurus out there next no, year. No, I just, I just used phrases that didn't make sense. You're, you're I was like, stand. they fight wrestle now. <laughs> they fight. Like, like, stuff like that. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I think that's why we're, we're going to have less notes, which makes sense. Uh, next up, we got Sonata versus Ju... Or, wait, I don't even <laughs> fucking introduce this. <laughs> I'm all disoriented now. You're all discombobulated. Um, yeah. Um, so we have a uh, few minutes in. We have the ref stopping a count uh, when Sonata takes Juice into the crowd and puts him to sleep because the ref just refused to count because, which was very co- contradicting to what they've done before. Because I've definitely seen them like get taped to like a, a barrier. Yeah, or something they count and, and they count. So I'm not sure why he refused to count here whenever the guy I mean, was... He just put a sleeper hold on yeah, him? Yeah, he put like a quick sleeper hold on him. And well, they didn't even cheat. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> it's a wrestling move. I don't know if he was refusing the count or just didn't want to count, but Sonata came back in and just, his, his strategy went for... Went for... Uh, was voided out there by probably Red Shoes. I don't know. Do you know any of the rest names besides yeah, Red Shoes? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I've heard one. They but say I the one. I can't remember it. Yeah. Um, later on, there's a really, uh, a really high, high uh, crossbody that came from Juice up from the top corner, um, top rope corner thing. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that they stand on. Yeah, the thing is that they climb up there and it's up there and whatnot. And do stuff and whatnot. Um, Juice. Later performs uh, Sonata's move and does a uh, skull's end and tries to to give him a moonsault to finish up, like how he, how uh, Sonata's been doing that like skull's end and yeah and they've almost about. been at, not out cold and uh, yeah as soon as Juice goes for it uh, I shouldn't tap whenever there's a microphone Sonata uh, yeah Sonata rolls out. Was there a previous one where Sonata or one of the, like Sonata did that in one in the last match or something? Yeah, I think he's done it twice. Yeah, and then Juice tried and it failed because Sonata's like, "That's my move. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm gonna move now." Um, Juice finishes up later on with a pulp friction to win. Um, <laughs> your name was just very funny, like pulp friction to win. I, I mean, there wasn't just like a lot to talk about. It was just yeah. a match. It was what it was. I mean, Juice. Uh, Juice, I, I kind of had a feeling Juice was gonna win because he had so many losses. They, yeah, they have. They don't want to. He, he holds a belt. You don't want to have your guy holding a belt just like look. Have like, like two shit. points at the end of the tournament. Yeah, it, w- it would look yeah. really, really bad on their part. There's certain ones where uh, you can kind of tell 
Mm-hmm. Because yeah, this is because of that. It's like, dude, he has four points. You like, need to give him, him some more. Him and Paige, just because Paige yeah. is in his big pushes. I think we talked about this before. I I think that we're gonna see more wins out of them later on, and having uh, their uh, uh, let's see, rite of passage, so to speak. Nah, this is finishing. See what I did there. He's a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> He's a cowboy. Uh, third match of the night, we get Yano versus Naito. Yano. Uh, did not immediately run for the pad, so that was cool. <laughs> um, Yano ran in the ring. Dude, he ran in in a rush. He was ready to start, and then Naito comes in, takes his good old time, unbuttons a few buttons, takes his, takes his stuff on, and Yano starts like getting all sorts of antsy with the ref, like, like telling him to hurry up. and He says something that I didn't understand, but everyone in the crowd started laughing at. You don't speak Japanese? I don't. I, I, I should Honestly, fucking learn how to with as much as we watch this fucking show. Didn't Yano put his shirt back on in protest, too, I think? Yeah. Because <laughs> it was taking so long, he got redressed. Yeah, I can't... My notes later, so I don't know if I went back and took more notes, but there's a point where his shirt's off. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he takes it off later on. Yeah. He takes his shirt off and tries to get the ref to take his shirt off, too. It was really funny. Dude, this was a really good comedy match. Really? Um, Let's see. What else we got here? We did get to see some 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 shimmers, some some small shine of. Uh, <laughs> you just named two female wrestling shimmer, organizations. Shimmer, shimmers and shine. I did it. <laughs> of uh, of of a, an aggressive Yano. Uh, They've been teasing that throughout. Some yeah. of the ones I've seen too. They're like, all right, this is going to be serious Yano now. Dude, he, this is going to be cheating Yano. This is going to be honest, not cheating Yano. Yeah, there's a spot where he really whips Naito into the barrier, and he's just like really aggressive with him. And then a few minutes later, he's doing, like, real funny stuff. Um, there's a spot where Yano tries to take Naito to the barrier, but gets taped there himself by Naito and has to pick up the barrier to make it back in the ring in time. It was really <laughs> funny watching him run down with the barrier and brings the barrier in, in, yeah. the, uh, in the ring with him. Um, Naito, or not Naito, Yano later on does take the pad off. Uh, but Naito uses the pad on him like a baseball bat and knocks him down. Um, Yano does look like, with the momentum of the match, it does appear that Yano, at, at, uh, for a lot of this, does have the momentum, which anyone who... Dude, <laughs> I watched this one night with my dad, and not this night, but the the one of the other nights with, with my dad, and he's like, if anyone knows anything about... He doesn't watch wrestling anymore, or, like, ever watch yeah. wrestling. He's maybe seen, like, way back in the day some stuff. But he's like, if anyone knows anything about studio wrestling, the guy who has the upper hand for the most of the match is not going to win. That's what as, he said? Uh, yeah, and as we're sitting there that night, and I'm, I'm, we're watching, he's like, yep, this guy's going to win because he has the upper hand most of the time. It happened. I'm like, yeah. you don't even watch wrestling. Yeah. This isn't... How are you like an expert all of a sudden? Unless he's watching a Finn Balor match. <laughs> um. Yeah, I heard he got beat down on, huh? <laughs> yeah, and then lost. Poor Finn. And then got beat down more. <laughs> um. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh, yeah, Naito at the end, though, has a comeback to Stina for the win. And that's what made me think of that, though. is Because he, he, he had the... the uh, Yano had that upper hand for me. Oh, so he was like, yeah, Naito's winning. Yeah. Well, this isn't the one where I had that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, uh, Omega versus Zack Sabre Jr. is next up on the night. I think this was our uh, sec- yeah, second to the last match, fourth match. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. works uh, Omega's knee a lot during this match, so um, it, you'll hear in some of my notes me talk about uh, him selling it, or the announcer selling it. Um, but early on in the match, we have Ke- uh, Kenny do, uh, does a moonsault off the barrier on the ringside whenever they're down uh, down on the mats and whatnot. The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the padding. Yeah. Um, that was a really cool spot and a really good uh, display of some some good balance there. Some athleticism. Yeah. Um, Zack Saber Jr. does a submission on the ramp, but Red Shoes walks ha- like. <laughs> walks all the way down there and just kind of gives him a tap, like, come on, let's get this in the ring. <laughs> let's move along here, please. Um, move along, sir. Zack Saber, yeah. Oh, Zack Saber Jr. switches to, uh, uh, he's up in the position for that you can't escape up on yeah. the shoulders. And he switches into this, like, uh, really effective choker with his legs. Um, 
which sets up to a callback later uh, for for Kenny whenever. Uh, this was one of the things where he worked his was working his knee later on because uh, he switched from I think he switched from the the Joker to something else on his knee. Um, but anyway, it sets up later on Kenny trying to re- reattempting to get his you can't escape, and when he goes up to do it, he can't do the moonsault part. Oh, cause because his knee. Yeah, which I thought was a uh, really good selling in his. Yeah. Part. Um. Later on, Kenny sets up for a uh, one of the 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 fully performed V triggers with the the whole the whole pointing of the gun and everything. And as soon as he points the gun, Zack Saber Jr. jumps up on his arm and puts him in an arm bar. <laughs> That's cool. But but Kenny just kind of he doesn't know sell it. I mean he he he's he sells it pretty well. But like he really like sells the fact that he his strength is able to just power powerhouse through a uh, Zack Saber Jr. because he picks him up and just spikes him on the ground. All ninety two pounds of him. Yeah. Um, Zack Saber Jr. probably does steroids. <laughs> Dude, Zack Saber Jr. is the the least intimidating wrestler I've ever seen. Ever. You think like he uses steroids, but he actually just shoots up with like broccoli juice or something. Mm-hmm. Broccoli. Isn't he like vegan? Is he some carrots? He I just, think he's vegan. He gnaws on the ends of carrots. Yeah. And then he shares that with his horse. He uses anabolic carrots to try to get big. <laughs> um. Let's see. So we're at the end of the match now, and there's a lot of... uh, there, There's a, a handful of times in a row where uh, Omega's trying to do a bunch of different signatures of his, and uh, Zack Sabre Jr. is just countering all of them. Um. It, there's a lot of pin and submission attempts out of wait hold on dude i read this a second ago i swear to god it made sense zach saber jr counters a few different omega signatures for pin attempts oh he kept countering them in the pin attempts yeah yeah, yeah. it's because i wasn't reading it as you read it to me it made perfect sense yes um and i'm sold on a few of them not everyone but you can tell there's times where the crowd got real loud and i'm like yeah "Uh." Dude, the, the the crowd getting loud is like a real big factor for selling me on some some of these pins. Yeah. If it's quiet, dude, I'm like, eh, kick out. Um, yeah, I even got scared when Zack Saber Jr. Had, I got had, scared. Had, yeah, dude, I, I'm a Kenny fan. I gotta get scared. Yeah. Um, Zack Saber Jr. had Kenny in a calf crusher, and this went on for like a good minute and a half, and then Kenny finally gets the ro- gets to the rope, just uh, just uh, yeah. Without quitting. I didn't have anything else to say. <laughs> I don't know why I said just. Without quitting. Yeah. He got there and didn't quit. Um, but it ends with Kenny getting a roll, uh, uh, a quick roll-up pin on uh, uh, <clears throat> Zach. <laughs> Zach. Yeah. Yeah, it was different than his normal one-wing angels in the pin. Yeah, no, no one-wing angel there. And they were emphasizing how like he beat him in mat, like with a mat wrestling move. Yeah. So Kenny's diverse. Yeah. He's quite diverse, that Kenny Omega. Um, yeah, after the mag, Zack Sabre Jr. is just fucking pissed. I guess th- they said he's eliminated after this. Do you, do you remember this? Yeah, I don't know. They don't make a lot of sense sometimes. Yeah. Like, uh, the one the one I watched afterwards, they're like, these two have a chance. I'm like, they actually don't, but okay. <laughs> because they're mathematically eliminated because they don't have tiebreakers and they're tied, so whatever. Like, half the time they say stuff, and, like, I even looked online afterwards. I was like, am I wrong? And then people were like, yeah, that's not right. So, yeah, Kevin Kelly isn't good at the quick math, that's for sure. At least they're not rewriting history, like, uh, or continuity, like WWE. Yeah, Yeah. they're just like, oh, he he can do it now. Yeah. You know what's really weird? Remember how we found out that if the champion wins, he gets to pick his opponent? Yeah. I was listening to Meltzer, and he didn't know what happens if the champion wins. Really? So I was like... Do they get to pick their opponent? Because he's not sure. I'm kind of nervous now. Yeah. I was like, I feel like if anyone would know, he would. He's been watching for like a thousand years. I guarantee you Jen Rosen has an answer for us. Pro- yeah, yeah, she does. Get Tell us the answer. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah, she does. It's your choice. It's not. Um, final match of the night is go to... I'm not taking too long. This is 20 minutes for me, right? Yeah. Um, go to versus Bushi. Uh, match starts real slow for me, um, but uh, really picks up about, eh, I'd say about four or five minutes in, uh, whenever Abushi hits his golden triangle. Uh, that's when the momentum really got rolling. 
Uh, Abushi gets his neck worked by Goto a lot throughout this match. Um, an example being the, uh, a, a neck breaker um, that the announcers are, are really start to. That's when they really start to sell on on this uh, neck injury here of Abushi. Um, Abushi holds a buckle during holds the uh, top buckle during a uh, a code red attempt from Goto. Uh, so Goto go like continues on with the move and. Goes for a ride without him. <laughs> Just um, lands on the mat. Goto sells one of the hardest lariats I've ever seen. Whenever, <laughs> whenever the two of them are rope checking off opposite sides, and yeah. they're like knocking, knocking like rams. Knocking. There it is, dude. That's the one I told you. You're gonna tell me that's not real. Rams knock whenever they headbutt like that. It's called knocking. <laughs> He's such an ass. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get some some color commentating here. What's it called when goats clothesline each other? Is it still knocking? <laughs> uh, it's good. It's called. Uh, uh, they throw up their hooves and run at I each think... other. It's still knocking. <laughs> when you said throw up their hooves, I imagine them in like a in like the. Uh, have you ever seen the Notre Dame logo with the, the yeah the, yeah, yeah, the fighting Irish? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Did you just look the word up. No, it's uh one of the. Uh, Local, uh, I don't know, it was like a kind of a, I, I don't know how to explain it. It, it. It's a thing, though. Oh, cool. So you've heard it before is what yes. you're trying to say. Yeah, it was one of the, the local football coaches to where I lived. He was comparing to the, the players' helmets to knocking like rams oh, okay. whenever they go against each other. So that was that was a, a, a thing they pushed on their T-shirts for the, the, the team. Okay. So I knew it was a thing. <laughs> Um, we're not going to talk about this much longer. Yeah. Let's, let's stop talking about knucking. <laughs> Do you want to knuck after after yeah. we're done here, Dave? It's going to hurt. We don't have helmets on. Wait, I thought you said fuck. Uh, yeah, I thought you did too. I thought I said fuck. We don't have helmets on, so we oh can't. Boy. Um, Goda does a show 10 later on. Uh, this is his move from the, uh, it's from like a vertical suplex position and he swings them down onto, onto his back, like under his arm. It's, a, it's called a what? Uh, a, Shoten. A Shoten. Huh. So imagine up in the he's up in the vertical suplex position, but like he comes back forward. I think I've tried to explain this before and I didn't know the name of the move. But he comes back forward and then tucks him under his arm and he lands on his back. Oh, uh, okay. Can you, are you imagining this? <clears throat> yeah, it just seems like an inverted DDT to me from up high. Inverted DDT is when someone's under your arm facing up and you just fall down. Yes. Sounds like you. It sounds like he goes from a vertical suplex to an inverted DDT. And they said fucking showdown. What do you want from me? Well, he does two things at once. He combined two moves to make it a showdown. Excellent. Um, that was quickly followed by a really good false finish. Um, let's see. It did a. Let's. We did finally finish up with a. Uh, uh, fuck. I did fuck up. Someone gets a last a last ride and uh, <laughs> someone someone gets a last ride cool. and breaks out and then a uh, I'm gonna assume it was Koda giving a go to a last ride here. Uh, uh, Koda Abushi does the last ride all the time. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna say Koda get Koda Koda Abushi gave uh, uh, Hiromi Hiro, uh, Hiroshi go yeah. Hiroki. Hiroki, Hiroki, Hiroki. My mouth's getting dry. Uki or Oki? <laughs> I feel like an old person whose mouth. Here, is have something to drink. Uh, you were going to crap. I was so excited, and then you gave me a bottle of fucking Windex. <laughs> I'm great. Anyway. Um, yeah, so Kodobushi does a uh, last ride to uh, uh, Sit Hiroshi down. Goto. Yeah. And then uh, follows up with a uh, Komagoya for a Komagoya. Komagoya. Yeah. Dude, that's a weird word to look at, and yeah, it's even spelled yeah, wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's even worse when I put it in. <laughs> it's already weird as it is, and then I type, and it's yes. even worse. The Kami Goya. Yeah. So how how'd you like the show overall? Yeah, this one was all right. It was all right. This one didn't do much for me. Mm. Not much. <clears throat> let's go. To, let's do the next night, and then we'll pause. Pause for the cause. Pause for the cause. Station identification. All right. We have a, all right. Here we go. This is night 13. This is an A-block night. This is better that you're up because I think I do better co color commentating. No, oh, here we go. Some annoying color commentating. Well, you, you got all sad. <laughs> his lip is down. His lip is all sticking out. His bottom lip. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, it is a Tatcha, unlike uh, Kenny Omega's. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, we start off this A block night with Elgin versus Bad Luck Filet. This is going to be a clean fight. Filet, the ref, the ref was like, all right, have a clean fight, guys. Let's get it on. And, and then that was said. Um, so... Kevin Kelly uh, said that Elgin has a potentially torn bicep, and it was super wrapped up, so I was guessing at that point it's a shoot. After watching a couple more nights, it seemed like it definitely is. I guess he definitely injured his yeah. arm. Um, Loa grabs Elgin's foot early on during a rope check, and uh, Elgin ducks a fall a clothesline and then just does a fucking dive right into Loa to uh, kind of take him out, which is smart. Uh, this is not always definitely a good match, but nothing really notable for the majority of it. Just like you were saying, like most of the, the Tonga matches are like that. Uh, the ref gets elbowed by accident, and <laughs> the crowd immediately reacts and starts getting mad. As soon as he gets <laughs> elbowed, I just started laughing because I'm like, this is funny. And then Loa gets in the ring, and the crowd got super fucking loud and pissed <laughs> off. And I was like, this is so great. They were getting so mad and so loud, which I thought was great. Uh, Mike gets Loa out of the ring and then slams Fale. Uh, he goes to the top, but then Tama runs down and hits him with a chair, and then Elgin wins by DQ. And then they just all beat the shit out of Elgin, uh, giving him a bunch of chair shots to his bad arm. So it was a typical Tongan match. Dude. My favorite part was the crowd getting mad. <laughs> it was really funny. Dude, what a, if, if you could pick one, uh, one person who, who's most likely eligible... To uh, be a, a, a guest ref on one of these Tongan matches. Do That's they the do guest in refs? In ju- I don't think nah, they probably don't. But if, if you could pick one, who do you think who do you think it should be? A guest ref for one of these Tongan matches? Yeah, and, and, and just have them keep the Tongans in line. Uh, I feel like it should be someone like a... Like, maybe not such a heel. Maybe like a Suzuki or an Ishii who's just like a tough badass... You know what I mean? Where they're not going to want to yeah. fuck with him. Like, they're just going to like kind of listen to him. Yeah. Or maybe even a bigger dude. Something like that, you know? I'm trying to think of someone, like, real fucking big. Could be the big show. Yeah, you're on to something. <laughs> could be the here, big Dave. show. They can, uh, it could be the, the famous dick wrestler, Jay Ryan. Yeah. Can slap him with their cock if they get out of line. I don't think Jay Ryan will ever be in New Japan. <laughs> no. No, he might be in that DDT promotion, though. Yeah. Uh, next, we have uh, Togi Makabe versus Hangman Page. As soon as it started, I was like, I wish Page would have brought the book out with him that he got on being uh, the elite. Like like we previously uh, mentioned. Was it in your match with Page match where he lost his boot, or was that... That might have been this one. I don't remember that. Okay, that was probably this one. At one point, he loses his boot, and I'm like... And I, and I just thought of being the elite where he's walking around without his shoe with shoes on <laughs> because he, got, he fucking threw him away. But, um... Uh, there's an example of some good commentating in this. Um, Paige hits a German with a bridge, and the ref counts, even though one of the shoulders is clearly up. Mm. And when you sit here like, oh, whatever. But then Kelly even points it out, and he goes, that would have been definitely would have been disputed if this was a three count. Like addressing like a fuck up, you know, and kind of like yeah. I just like when they do stuff like that. Like, dude, like they're com- like Kelly is so good on commentary. Mm. Rocky's getting better too. Dude, I I noticed. I was just about to say. I noticed Rocky say something during that Okada match that I just watched. And you were like, "That was a good, yeah, a good call or something like that." Yeah, yeah. They're getting. They're, I'm they're, sure what it was. I, they're probably. It's probably my favorite commentating. Yeah, like the only it's thing definitely better than ROH. The only thing that would make it better. No, no offense to Rocky. Like you said, he's been getting better. Is if Callus was there. The yeah, I like Callus more. There was one line at some point. I don't have it noted. Oh, okay, it's one of the later matches where, where something happened to Rocky. And then Kelly's like, yeah, that was Kyle, so I just would have left him there all night. Because he didn't, like, I'll, I'll get to that whenever I tell you yeah. what happens. But <laughs> do it, it do you notice on funny. some of the shows they have, uh, for the Japanese ones, they have, uh, uh, what the fuck's his name? Uh, Yujiro Takahashi doing some of the commentating. Really? Well, I haven't the, seen, I've seen like Kushida and it, some other ones. It's not a lot, but there's like one or two where I see him sitting at the end, like, and he's supposed to be talking, but because I'm watching the English version, it's just nothing. I feel like his commentary is probably really entertaining. Dude, how funny would it be if there was an entire show, English show, with him on the commentary? That'd be great. Like, on being the elite, and he's just trying to say things, and he just yells and he's nonsense. He's swearing a lot. Like he, he, he does could, a lot of swearing. He could be the third guy and just not say much, but like there's something real funny out there every once in a while. They're going to have him in place of Rocky. It'll be Kelly all by himself. Kill- and occasionally he's just like, fuck you. That'd be really funny. I would enjoy it. 
Uh, Makabe hits a belly to belly from the second turnbuckle, but misses the King Kong knee drop. Paige does a rope check to do a. Okay, this was weird. So Paige does a rope check to do a move on Makabe, who's like kind of standing in the middle of the ring, dazed. So he bounces off the ropes and he runs at him, but he doesn't like do anything. He has his hands down like he's just running, and I'm like, and then he just runs at Makabe and gets clotheslined. I was like, what was your plan, Paige? Like, it, didn't, it looked really weird, and I was like, what was the point of that? So I don't know if that was a miscommunication or what, but it was very weird. Um, beautiful buckshot lariat, and then a rite of passage. And, dude, this rite of passage Makabe took looked fucking really good and scary. It looked like he bounced off his fucking head when he took it. Uh, Paige won by pinfall. Thank God. I think yeah. this was his first actual win. Points. A lot of DQ. So that was... Uh, yeah, I think the one I watched today, he, he left with six points. Yeah. Spoilers so for later like, in the yeah. show. Way to ruin everything. Um, he either came in or left with six points. Can't remember. Something about six points. I know that much. Next we have your favorite wrestler, Yoshihashi. I, I don't hate him. He's just, I don't know. Maybe he's your favorite. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Versus Jay White, Yoshi, your least favorite wrestler. Yoshihashi, the, the best bout machine. Yeah, he's the king of the monkey magic or something. Um, the headhunter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, White attacks Hashi from behind to start, and Rocky and Kelly uh, keep talking about how Jay keeps saying it's his chaos. So it sounds like they may be trying to keep that storyline alive with the whole, like, uh, him, like, challenging Okada or whatever. Yeah. Because they brought it up there, so I was like, maybe they are going to do something with it. Um White repeatedly throws Hashi into the guardrail in front of the commentators, and they keep yelling at White. <laughs> Kelly goes, you already knocked us off the air three goddamn times, which is pretty funny. <laughs> it kind of made me laugh. I enjoy Kelly. There's all kinds of headhunting going on. There's a running one, then one from the top rope. Some headhunting. Yeah, there's some headhunting going on in this in this, in this match. Um, so Hashi's going to come off the top rope, but uh, White is holding red shoes in front of himself to kind of use him as a shield. Then we have a Blade Runner reversed, and then Karma gets reversed. And then Red Shoes is standing in the corner, and Hashi almost runs into him. You know how they stop at the last second and put their hands up so they don't hit him? Yeah. But then Jay just comes behind Hashi and pushes him into him anyway, and then knocks <laughs> Red Shoes down, which is kind of funny. Um, low blow by White. But then he helps up Red Shoes because he's a nice guy. Oh, he like, a, was, a, yeah, yeah. What a swell guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a gentleman. He's a gentleman in the skull. He just helps him up off the ground. So, you know, then he goes for a Blade Runner, but then it gets reversed again. Uh, then Hashi hits some moves and does this great-looking Fisherman's Buster. Uh, Karma gets reversed into a Blade Runner, and Jay White wins by pinfall. You Jay White's going to be in a movie? Really? Yeah, he's going to be. Uh, he's going to be playing. Here this. we go. This is going to be dumb. <laughs> Continue. Uh, he, he already dismantled it. It's done. <laughs> The fact that we know it's going to be dumb will make it even funnier. All right, so Jay White's going to be playing a janitor, right? <laughs> Is it Freddy Krueger? Well, no, it's going to be it take place inside like Harvard or something, and then he's this janitor in Harvard, and he just walks up to this like this board that has this big equation on it, and he, he just starts stabbing people with his switchblade, <laughs> like no. college kids. Oh, you jumped the gun. He was going to stab Robin Williams with a switchblade. <laughs> What, what? What? I don't understand. This is going to be called Good Switchblade Hunting. But what does anything about Good Will Hunting make you think of Switchblade to even go there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you're like, you, they're going to make this movie with Jay White where he's on this train and then it wrecks, but he survives and doesn't get hurt. I, and then he's unbreakable and he's a superhero. <laughs> and then he stabs Samuel L. Jackson. Well, well, I think Yoshihashi would play that role better. Wait, why? Because he's Magic Monkey Guy or whatever? No, because he can stab better than Jay White. What? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> oh, you're such a jackass. Uh, we're on a tangent here. Let's let's get back to your, your comments. That I'm was sorry. the main event. No. Oh. That was the main event of <laughs> the night. The it was Jay White versus Yoshihashi. That was, oh. <laughs> Next we have Tanahashi versus Evil. Tanahashi's grown on me. Says evil. Yeah, evil's grown on me. Tanahashi's still okay. But uh, Tanahashi said something that I, I definitely agree with, which I'll talk about later. Um, so this may sound like a small like move, but dude, <laughs> Tanahashi's on the mat and evil does a running, jumping set ta- senton and just fucking crushes the shit out of Tanahashi. Really? I'm just like, Jesus. 
Um, Kelly talked to, this was really cool. Kelly talked to, you notice the sleeve Tanahashi wears? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So Kelly uh, brought that up and talked about that, that he wear, the reason he wears it is because of a bicep tear he got about two years ago at an ROH show. And he never got surgery on it, so it didn't heal right. So he always wears that sleeve now to kind of like help his arm. And I was like, that's yeah. kind of a little bit of cool info, a little background info. Is that fave or non? Uh, it, sound, it sounds, what? Non. non kayfabe. <laughs> it sounds like a shoot. <laughs> non. It's non kayfabe. Non. <laughs> it's like non, you know. <laughs> uh, Tanahashi sitting on the top rope and Evil just clotheslines him to the outside. It was a pretty rough looking bump for the... Uh, the, the ace. The, uh, he's the ace. Everything Go. is... What? Go ace. That's his intro shit. They all y'all go ace. I think ace. he cheats at cards. Ah, uh, like a Lando Calrissian type situation? Well, yeah, like every time he just has five aces and everyone's like, I don't like playing poker with you, Tanahashi. Because <laughs> he always just has aces. That'd be too bad. Yeah, but for some reason, he always plays with four different t- breeds of dogs. What? Poker. He put he sits at the poker table with dogs. Is that about that painting? <laughs> Is that one that painting? picture? The poker dog. It's like painting? Salvador Dali, where that like all the dog. dogs are melting. The right? poker dog face. So everything is evil reversed <laughs> into a twist and shout. You know what the twist and shout is? Yeah, it's kind of like the Tonga twist, isn't it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Snap swinging neck or, this, or, or the is it? I don't do. I don't know. For some reason, I grouped the Tonga twist, the twist and shout, the. Uh, What's Jay's the the Blade Runner? The Blade Runner, yeah. These are all these are all very similar, are they not? Yeah, it's a lot of starting and then doing a twirl and then they fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he hits the crossbody from the top and then misses the frog splash. Mm. Darkness falls, but Tanahashi kicks out. Awesome series of reversals back and forth until Tanahashi hits everything is evil on evil, and then the frog splash. Tanahashi wins by pinfall. Um, so which one is the high fly flow? Because they called it the crossbody and the frog splash, the high fly flow. I think they fucked up. Yeah, which one is it supposed to be? The frog I, I splash? Think the frog splash. Okay. I th- at least that's what I thought. Because I even rewound it because I was like, or went back and I was like, okay, they definitely called it both of them. So Dude, I don't. The one I was listening to, Kevin Kelly called, uh, he called something, something the, the, the Blade Runner. And I'm like, that's not even. That's a movie. Yeah, he called he called something that drastically the wrong name, and then Rocky corrected him. I'm Harrison like, Ford was in that. Yeah, but like it doesn't it doesn't make it okay. Well, maybe <laughs> get up here. Maybe Rocky was watching it or something. I didn't think it was that far. Well, look at that. What does that tell you? It, it says that uh, it says the computer says that you're a dead fuck. Oh man, <laughs> does the computer lie? I don't know the next. You're supposed to say, like, I hate you. <laughs> the next line, I'm sorry. The next line was, I hate you, so it okay, kind of worked out. They, they never said that. Oh. Now it's time for your main event, which is uh, Kazuchika Okada versus Minoru Suzuki. Minoru Suzuki. Uh, so Suzuki goes right after Okada, starts kicking his ass. Dude, I'm happy we started watching New Japan before Suzuki retired. Yeah. I really am. I like Suzuki. Yeah. Uh, they brawl outside, uh, and with Okada laying under a guardrail, Suzuki starts hitting it with a chair and just beats the shit out of Okada for a while with chairs and whatnot outside. Uh, Suzuki just dominates Okada for a long time until the New Japan forearm battle that happens a lot. Uh, dude, so <laughs> at one point, uh, <laughs> Okada is like pushing Suzuki's head down and just like fucking taunting him and like fucking with him. Making him suck his dick? Yeah. And then, dude, Suzuki hits him with, like, the most brutal form I've ever seen. I'm like, holy fuck, dude. dude he nails him There's so one. many times when I'm watching New Japan, I'm like, this is the most most uh, brutal insert insert move here I've yeah. ever seen. And then there's another one that tops it. Yeah. <laughs> so then there's a thousand more forearms back and forth. And as Suzuki's, Suzuki's getting blasted, he's just maniacally laughing as he's getting hit. Suzuki, it was great. He's crazy, dude. Yeah, he, it was really cool. He, his, like, facial expressions really sell him being, like, a crazy old man. Yeah. Dude, when I look at him, I'm like, I don't want to fuck with that guy. He'll just pull out a fucking... A fucking spoon and stab me to death. I don't know <laughs> He'll what He'll start do. eating my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he, like he, he's just looking at you, like, with his big, like, his big, like, excited looking eyes and just starts waving his tongue around in the air. And, and like, then you look up the beginning, you your arm's, like, halfway down his throat, and you're like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? Why are you eating me? Stop it. Um, 
There's lots of stiff open palm strikes in this. These guys are just beating the fuck out of each other. I can't. I can't wait to get home for some own, my own stiff open palm strikes. If you know what I mean. <laughs> that was dumb. <laughs> that was, <laughs> it needed. It needed to be happened. <laughs> needed to be happened. Yes. I don't know that it did. <laughs> Okada's going for a gotch pile driver, and Suzuki reverses it to go for a tombstone, which Okada reverses into a gotch tombstone pile driver. Okada hits a spinning clothesline and then a rainmaker, and Okada wins by pinfall. That was the main event. Go you Ace. realize that the rainmaker is just a short arm clothesline that's been a move for like years and yes. years and years. Yes. It's like, but he just called it the rainmaker. Nobody else could possibly perform the rainmaker though. No, he just hits it a lot harder. You see. Nobody else could perform the rainmaker. You see. No one ever. So I'm starting to think that like there's like this like category of moves, right? Like like the V trigger or the rainmaker, they're just they're not meant to be finisher moves, but rather just very impactful and low efforts to, so that you could perform them multiple in succession, or they're effective. It, it's like it's like going to McDonald's. It's a, the value meal. You well, know what I mean? Well, the rainmaker, from what I watch, is supposed to be a finishing move. From all the matches I've seen, it's a finishing move. The V trigger, no, is not a finishing move. Mm-hmm. I mean, he wins. He wins a lot of his matches I, doing a rainmaker. I feel, I, well, he wins doing it, but don't we see a few of them throughout the match as well, though? Ah, uh, yeah. So my point could still stand. Just the patterns more towards the well, end. Well, it's of the a match. finishing move that's just fucking prostituted and stupid. Don't just make it a transition move. Kenny doesn't ever beat people with a V trigger ever. No. So you know what I mean? Like, just make it a move you do during your match and don't make it a move where you're, like, winning almost every match with that move. What's his finishing move if not the Rainmaker? Dude, one of my favorites... Like, that's the only move he does to win. Yeah. You know? No, I see what you're saying. It's just, I, I, I'm I, starting to look at the Rainmaker as more, like, what I said. Like, what, what, weren't you wearing glasses before? Nope. That's why I just put them on. Man, I'm confused. Um, I swear you were. Nope. Okay. Um, just put them on. It, where, where it's more of this, like, this supposed to be just a high impact being able to perform at, uh, like, like you, you get a lot of bang for your buck. You know what I mean? Uh, it's that's not, a move. No, that's, not, yeah, that's, that's not what I meant, though. Uh, no, no pun intended. That's what the Young Bucks do, that move. Yeah, yes. Yes, mm-hmm. they do. It's a, but, it's, a, it's a Young Bucks but, move. But a, a, a high amount of impact for a minimal amount of effort that you could perform in succession, use it to set up other moves. But yeah, like you said, I guess he has finished like completely on that though. I mean, well, he doesn't. He doesn't have like. Does he win anything else? Like he'll do like the tombstone and like two rainmakers a lot. Yeah. We've seen lately. Well, I mean, he better come up with a new finish than if he's going to keep doing that all throughout the match. I, 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 That's what he does. I think. I, I, I do think it's a better idea for him to not use them as finishers, but it's not bothering me. I think he just he'll, he'll just need something to be his own finisher to perform after the Rainmakers rather than do the Rainmakers after his Tombstone finisher or whatever. Yeah. He needs, he needs a new move. Yeah, he does. You need to speak up. He needs a new move. Yeah, he does. Now we're going to pause for the cause. For station identification. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, you're listening to WD2. Now we're, we're doing it. We're recording again. It's still hot. It is. Drink one to two glasses of water and call a physician immediately. Yeah. Hopefully you don't stay like that. No, that wasn't... That was uh. That was intended to be an Easter egg for someone to turn up their volume to hear you say to drink water. <laughs> that's a weird Easter egg. That's, that's a very strange Easter egg. We have two shows left, Gable, to cover on this show. Mark Madden. Two nights to cover on this show. You know what it's time for? Suck some dicks. It's time for B-Block, baby. B-Block, baby. B-Block, baby. B-Block, baby. Yeah, shut up. It's uh, night 14. You know what date this show aired? August 2nd. Fourth. August 4th. B second, block. Second fourth. Night 14. G1 climax number 28. 
And we start off with Toru Yano versus Sonata. Okay, this is the one. Uh, so Yano, <laughs> Yano attacks Sonata from behind on the ramp and then tied him up with a shirt after a failed attempt at the Paradise Lock. Um, <laughs> then he ran in the ring to try to get a count out while Sonata's just there, on the laying there. But Sonata made it to the ring. At one point, he's hopping while he's tied up to get to the ring. They all just tied together. Oh, tied, uh, tied together. His arms or his like legs? His arms. Yeah, he was like hog tied, yeah. So he's, uh, he's got like, all four. Yeah, and he's like kind of jumping. He's in a very vulnerable he's, state. He's, bu- he's bent over and like jumping down, and he eventually gets it off and just runs, jumps in the ring. But uh, so then, so then later, Yano gets put in the Paradise Lock outside, and then uh, Sonata goes back in the ring to get him counted out, and then Rocky came and helped him out, so he didn't get counted out. Rocky came in. Well, he was outside the ring, so he just ran over to him and just knocked him over so he could get out of the Paradise Lock. Uh, I see. Because Yana was yelling for Rocky to help. So then Sonata sets up a guardrail by the ring, puts Yano in the Paradise Lock in the guardrail, like wrapped into the guardrail, mm-hmm. and then tapes the guardrail to the post. And then Rocky gets up again to try to help, so then he puts Rocky in the, in the Paradise Lock. Mm. And then he wins by countouts. <laughs> Because Yano just gets counted out. <laughs> and then uh, Rocky was trying to be funny because he's still doing commentary while he's in the Paradise Lock because his headset's on. Yeah. But it was just like stupid and not funny. What did he do? <laughs> he was just saying things. He was just like, talking like this. Like he, it was just really stupid and not uh, funny. Shut so, up, Rocky. Yeah. You're not Don Callis. Yeah, and there was some point because Kelly called for someone to come help Rocky. And that's when he was like, if you were Don, I just would have left you there all night. We, we need to move Rocky over to ROH. That's what we need to do. We need to get him in there for... Uh, ah, man. I would say Riccoboni, but then like... Rocky? Yeah. <laughs> He's not a play-by-play guy. Yeah, that's, that's why I said that's... Uh, Maybe we can say. put him in place of uh, Riccoboni. I hate you. <laughs> what? It's a good idea. You don't need a play-by-play guy. Just have two color guys. Hmm. What are you looking at me like that for? Two color guys. What are you looking at me like that for? It sounds like a great idea. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> Nothing a, could go wrong. That's a terrible idea. Uh, wow. Man, that was amazing. Whoa, look at that. We don't know any moves that are being done. <laughs> well, we have are the moves that Rocky's calling by the wrong name. Wow, that, that's the Rainmaker. Rocky, isn't that just a closed line? No, that's the Rainmaker. That's the sharpshooter. Uh, so next we have Tomatonga <laughs> versus Haruki Goto. Uh, it does not take long for Tama to distract the ref, and Loa pushes Goto off the top turnbuckle to the outside. So we initially have interference right at the beginning. This is shocking. A little brawling outside, and Loa interferes again with a short arm clothesline, a.k.a. the Rainmaker. Loa does the Rainmaker now. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You're Loa, telling me... Loa did the Rainmaker. You're telling me that someone who isn't Kajuka Okada, Kajushka Okada, performed a Rainmaker? Yes. In the ring? No. Oh. It was, That's out, fine, it was outside the that ring. That makes sense, then. That's fine. Uh, there's some basic in-ring, st- in-ring stuff back and forth. So this part's a little fugazi here. So Tama had uh, go to up for like a power bomb, and he's holding him. Uh-huh. And then like they get all weird and move real weird, and then he kind of throws him down, and like Goto kind of like lands like on his butt, but uh-huh. like a little on his back too, and just jumps up. And I'm like, what the fuck just happened? It's like he was supposed to take the move, but didn't, and they were like confused in mid move if they still wanted to do it. I don't know what <laughs> happened. It was uh, it was really weird. Maybe he was like chafing and he had to walk to his car like a cowboy. Maybe. I mean, none of those things happen there though. There's no, no car. There's no cowboy <laughs> walking. There's nothing like that at all. It's a callback. It's an it's off-screen a, callback. It's, a, uh, it's an offline callback. Is that an Easter egg? It's an off. Yeah. Sure. Let's I, do it. I mean, I guess. Wait. So since James Gunn's not on the project anymore, can you tell us what that one Easter egg was? No, he's not allowed to talk about the movies at all. Oh fuck that! Yeah. Uh, so ref gets bumped and Loa comes in and power slams Goto, but after that Goto fights them both off, gets out of two stun guns and hits a GTR. Fale pulls the ref out and then throws the ref into the guardrail, so Goto wins by DQ. The guardrail, so the cars don't go off the road. Yeah. 
But, never mind. <laughs> never mind. The match continued even though the bell rang. <laughs> and they called for a DQ. And even Kevin Kelly seemed confused and addressed that it didn't make sense why the match was still going because they rang the bell. So then Red Shoes comes down in place of the other ref as Tom has go to pen. It's a dusty finish. No. Oh. And then Red Shoes goes down for the count and then gives the OGs the bird and then rings the bell again. So then go to one by DQ again. <laughs> Dude, this finish was a fucking mess. I don't know what happened. <laughs> like... I don't know what I don't know what went wrong, but they definitely fucked something up. Was it as messy as the uh, the the roll up pin by Tanahashi at the end of his it was match? Worse later than on? that. That was one move. You noticed that though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this was this was a series of what the fuck is happening right now. So I don't know what happened there, but I do. You know what I enjoy? I like how whenever they have you've seen this happen about sixteen times now when the ref gets pulled out of the ring. Yeah. I like how they frame it so you don't see who's doing it and the ref just kind of gets pulled so it doesn't spoil it it's going to happen. It looks like he, he got he got ghosted in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like how they do that. Me too. No, you don't. You told me specifically uh, you hate that. Rainmaker. No. Dude, I have a lot I'm of I'm going to hit you with the Destino match. later. Don't worry. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Juice Robinson. I hate Juice. Uh, there's some hard-hitting chops and uppercuts and forearms, otherwise standard stuff. There's not a shit ton of submission stuff from Sabre here, but there's still some cool stuff. He's working the broken hand a mm. while. Then Juice unwraps his broken hand and hits Sabre in the face with it because he's like mentally retarded or something. He, I don't know why. Do, uh, why are you still wrapping it? You took the wrap off like three or four times now. And what makes him even more retarded is after he does that, he lays there and sells his hand so long that Sabre basically gets up. And I'm like, why'd you even do it? Yeah. <laughs> You're dumb. Uh, pulp friction reversed and Sabre continues beating the shit out of the broken hand. Sabre puts Juice in like the craziest submission I've ever seen. Like... He's, like, stretching the hand and has his arms behind him, but then also has him in, like, a figure four at the same time. And, like, Juice's own legs are kind of pushing against his throat. It was fucking crazy. And he won by submission. Juice quit because he's a fucking pussy. Tapped out. (laughs) He was, like, he didn't even tap. He was, like, I can't go on anymore, referee. You can see him say it with his mouth because he's a bitch. (laughs) That was great. Juice Robinson's a bitch. Juice tapped. He tapped. With his mouth. Just he come over he didn't, here. He didn't do that. He tapped with his mouth. That's what Taka says, right? He just come over his, here. He's like, come over here. He's like, just come over here. And he goes, so, just It's a tap reference out. to Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Except slightly different. Well, that's, that's, that's legally, why it's called a reference. Legally different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who the little cartoon guy is supposed to be on the shirt. Is it supposed to be it, him? Or? It's supposed to be Taka. Yeah. Looks like Scorpion a little bit. And next we have the worst match of the night. Kenny Omega versus Tomohiro Ishii. 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 All right, I have a lot of notes here. Let's let's get into this. Yeah, I can't fucking wait. So the first thing I want to make a comment on, which isn't really in relating to this match, I guess a tiny bit when Omega comes out. So as I'm watching Omega walk out and him standing in the ring and the match is about to start, I'm thinking back to when I first started, when we first started watching this. And, like, you're in love with Omega, and I'm just like, he's all right. Yeah, I wasn't initially in love with Omega. but You I, were in love I, with him after, like, maybe ten minutes of watching it him. It was after I started binge-watching some of his older matches. Yeah, so you immediately became in love with him. Yes. And I was like, he's all right. And then I had the same all right opinion when I watched Okada Omega. I'm like, the match is okay, and, like, you're just sucking its dick, and you're like, I loved it. Having watched a bunch of his matches now, I'm sold. Yeah. I'm sold on Omega. He's great. Um... Which I'm surprised by because a lot of people have described his character as like an an anime character brought to life. You I don't, don't see like, that at all. You don't like anime. Well, you don't watch that much anime. I mean, anime is dumb. He's I, not. I, I, well, all right. We'll just move along now. All right. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for your permission. Uh, I get pumped just seeing him standing there in the ring like about to start the match. But Okada is definitely still overrated as fuck. So that hasn't changed. So, yeah, if, if, if the match was Okada and Omega without Okada in it, I probably would have liked that match a lot more in retrospect. Yeah. Maybe you could have just wrestled a blow-up doll or something. It probably would have been better. Or Ishii. Yeah, that too. That's a good point. 
Uh, Omega starts off kind of just toying with Ishii and like just slapping the top of his head like he's playing the drums. Dude, I thought, which I, I was like, dude, as he's doing, I'm like, dude, you're nuts. Why are you fucking with him like this? He's gonna <laughs> kill you. Which I thought was really cool. It was, dude. At the, I both, I don't know. It, it was weird. It was a weird way <laughs> to fuck with him because he looked really like stupid while doing it. But then I'm like, hmm, this is just to show that he's like taunting him basically. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it just looks stupid. No, I, I'm there. I'm there. I'm sold on it. <laughs> All right. Initially, when I first saw it, though, I'm like, eh, this might this might be, be weird if he keeps doing stuff like this the entire match, which he did not. No, he did not. So Omega does a leapfrog, and when he lands, Ishii is, like, ducking for it and then runs headfirst into Omega. So this is not really a very good start because they clearly fucked that spot up. Um, their timing was definitely off, which was weird. I'm like, they're both so good. So they fucked that they up. They picked it back up. Yeah, the commentating even, like, they kind of were like, oh, look, you just speared him right in the stomach. I'm like, yeah, that's what he was going for, clearly. <laughs> um, so uh, a V-trigger misses, and Omega just keeps slapping and fucking with Ishii between moves for a little bit. And I'm just like, you're so brave, sir. <laughs> this guy's going to murder you. Um, dude, I love the chemistry with these two guys. Yeah. Early on in the match, I'm just, like, just digging it. I'm just very entertained by it. Uh, Ishii gets Omega up for a power bomb. And they kind of fuck up again, and he stumbles back and falls into the ropes. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing this. Uh, luckily, uh, luckily, the ropes caught him, so it wasn't really that bad. Dude, didn't Ishii just fall in another one? I know someone did. I can't remember who it was. It might have been Ishii. I don't remember. I think it was... I think it might have been an Ibushi match. Maybe. maybe Ishii it was a, and Ibushi. Maybe it was Ibushi and Ishii. Do you think this is like a, 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 a kayfabe spot they're sitting up there? Uh, uh, a work spot? No. No? No. It just happens to fall a lot. I just think it's an accident. It just falls a lot. He's I mean, dude, Ome- guy, every- yeah, Omega's, not a, Omega's yeah. a big dude. Yeah. So is Ibushi. Is- Ibushi's the kind of short, though, isn't he? I don't think he's that short. For some reason, I imagine him as short. It's because you're I'm racist. You wrong. think Japanese people are short. Yeah. Hmm, here we go. Um, so then he does the Rise of the Terminator. Remember the day, we'll discuss this on here, why it's called the Rise of the Terminator, which I never got till a couple days ago. Because he has a hard dick just like Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, if, if you've seen the Terminator, whenever he starts to move, he kind of kneels down as Arnold did when he first arrives back in time, and then he stands up. So, it's the Terminator rising up, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of cool Omega things where, like, if you, uh... There's, like, little head nods to, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. pop culture and stuff. Just V-Trigger. If you like Street Fighter, you're like, oh, V-Trigger. Dude, he even references the Avengers in, in uh, what was it, Dominion in his video. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. So, V-Trigger. Another, uh, we have a V-Trigger here, but then Ishii hits a series of moves basically killing Omega. Um, Ishii went for the one-wing angel, but it gets reversed. V-Trigger. And Kenny hits a beautiful sit-down powerbomb. Then we have two devastating short knees, which are basically just little mini V-triggers. Let's, I mean, let's, who are we kidding here? Yeah. They're just a V-trigger without him just... Uh, he didn't yell running. V-trigger? Yeah. He did or didn't? No, he didn't. He didn't. So, okay. yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then we have a series of moves where we get a V-trigger, a V-trigger, a V-trigger, and a V-trigger. <laughs> um, this is not exaggerating. I know. Ishii uh, did have one clothesline in the middle of all of them, though, somewhere. Yeah. And then uh, and then we get a Snapdragon, and then Ishii no-sold like half the moves during that whole sequence. Yeah. But um, Ishii reverses the one-wing angel, and then Kenny goes for a Hurricane Ron, and Ishii just power bombs him, which was really cool. He caught him up for that and just I, dropped him. Yeah, that, that I, I remember sweet. thinking that was a really cool spot. Yeah, and speaking of cool spots, we have another V-Trigger, and then holy shit, dude... When Ishii is hanging halfway out of the ring. Fuck. Oh my god. Fucking Omega does a springboard, stands on the ropes, and does a fucking double stomp. I remember when... And I'm like, dude, you're fucking heel. Yeah. He landed on his feet from so far up. I'm like, what are you doing? I remember when that moment happened. I could tell the match was going to go from just a, a, a really good match to a great yeah. fucking match. That move was crazy. It was really, really cool. Um, there's a great, uh, false finish after an, uh, Aoi Shoto that, uh, got me. I think. That's, that's the one where he has his, his legs up in the... Yeah, head. and drops him kind of on their head on his knee. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, 
Um, I just didn't know how to spell it, so I spelled it how it's pronounced. So I just put Owie. Shodo. Owie Shodo. Yeah. Um, one one wing angel gets reversed again. A V trigger gets reversed, and then a V trigger is hit. Uh, and then maybe the most devastating J driller I've ever seen. Like he, <laughs> this looks like he just dropped him right on his fucking head. Um, it was really cool. God damn it, Jay. Yeah. Driller. Uh, then we have a V trigger. A one wing angel reversed again, and then they hit this fucking like, it's a crucifix pen where the one guy kind of has the other guy on his side and pins him, but they fucking made it like a, a fucking slamming move where when they hit a slammed hard, I've never really seen that, which was really cool. Like you see, you know what the crucifix pin is? Yeah. He kind of rolls up and he's on his side, but they were just in the midair and just both fucking fell really hard. Like they hit a move when they I, did dude, it. I remember seeing this and thinking how different it was. Yeah. yeah. I was like, man. That was really then fucking I, cool. Then I, then I remember noticing a bunch more crucifixes after that over the next few shows. Yeah, but then all the crucifixes you see, they just kind of roll them into Yeah, they, it. they weren't nearly as cool as that one. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, this was one where they're like, I'm going to try to kill him as I do this crucifix. I feel like I just never paid attention to the crucifix roll up at, in, in, until like right really? then. Really? Yeah. Because the, the uh, impact got your attention that yeah. time. Um, and that caused another false finish, and dude... Like, I sit in there, and whenever he hit that move, I yelled out, I'm like, holy fuck! And then he kicked out, and I'm like, holy fuck! Again. Dude, I remember laying in bed going nuts during this match. Yeah. Um, just the build of the match had me so pumped, and, in, and in, I'm just so into this match, to the point where it's going on for a while, maybe like, you know, 18, 20 minutes, and in my mind, I have no idea how long it's been. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, what if there's a time limit on this? Mm. Dude, how how fucking how fucking awesome is it when you're watching a match and you you have no concept of how much time has passed? Well, yeah, because dude, I'm sitting there and I'm already just into it, and then I'm like, what if the fucking bell rings any minute here and it's just over? And it even put me more on the edge of my seat because like this could be a time limit draw. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, oh my god, hurry up, hurry up. What if there's a time limit? Because I had no concept of how long it'd been. Um, then we have a V trigger. Uh, Ishii hits a devastating clothesline that we'll get back to in a minute here. Mm -hmm. um, another V-trigger. And then Ishii hits a brain buster and gets the fucking pin. And like, yeah. dude, I'm a, I immediately yell out, holy fucking shit, like whenever yeah. he pinned him. My... And, Oh, oh, and dude, uh, this is not an exaggeration. Uh, you, uh, you're probably like, what a douche. I sat there staring at my computer screen for like a solid minute after just like, like, looking at what's happening, like, because he just lost. Like, just staring and not even saying anything. Like, I, I probably, it was crazy. I probably would have if I didn't have to piss so bad. Because there was a point during the match <laughs> where I'm like, I need to piss, but I don't feel like getting up. I'm watching this. Yeah, I gotta go pee pee. As soon as it was done, I was like, holy shit. I look, I, after I saw the shot of his, like, face all fucked yeah. up and shit, I'm like, alright, time to piss. Yeah, and then they show his lip is all fucking busted. It was from that clothesline where you hit him earlier. Yeah. was where it happened. Dude, this lip today was falling off. Like it was gross. Yeah, dude, this match was incredible. I uh, dude, it. I I remember liking the nighttime match a lot. Yeah, the nighttime mega match. This definitely topped that. This for me is the best match I've seen since I started watching New Japan. For me, like I I can't remember the last time I was this into a match. Like I was just fucking like I was there. I'm just like so fucking into it. Like it was so good. I loved it. Yeah, dude, I can't. Man, I fucking loved I it. I might be, I might be there with you, dude. I can't think of some. I, I mean, maybe the Okada Omega one for you because you yeah, really love that I one. I didn't really. I'd have to go back and watch it again. I don't know. The thing with Okada, the Okada Omega for you is, I feel like it was so recent since we started watching. Maybe it, I mean, yeah. it was an amazing match, but it's the first one you kind of saw that was that amazing yeah. to you. So maybe it was a little more impactful. Yeah. So maybe if you do watch it again, you like you maybe you will appreciate this one more than that one. It's hard to say. You'd have to. And there's also the payoff of like just seeing someone win a belt as well. Yeah. The championship win, even even or like like if you're watching like football or something, like a regular season, a really good regular season wins cool and all, but like a decent like Super Bowl win, yeah. it still like topples that. You know what I mean? Like the, the another thing that's nice about this is like the build with him being undefeated, like. Dude, it got, I, when I, going into this match, I'm like, I don't want Omega to lose. I want him to go undefeated in this tournament. Yeah. I want him to go undefeated. By the time this match was over, I was glad he lost because it made it so much more impactful. Yeah. I'm like, that's so cool he lost. And like, they did such a great job of building his undefeated thing. 
and just having someone beat him, like, it was so well done. So fucking well done. And then, like, I hope Ishii, Ishii should get a title shot out of this now, down the road. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like I was reading some stuff online, and people were saying, like, that he should... It might be, like, him and Ishii at the next pay-per-view Dude, or whatever. I, I would love to see Ishii get, a, get, like, a huge push. Yeah. The only issue is that, like, if they have another match, one might actually die this time. What about, what about this? What about Ishii? Ready? Oh, what? Jericho. Yeah, Jericho's all right. I'm not a big Jericho <laughs> fan anymore. I liked his New Japan stuff so yeah, far. I don't know. Like, I watched both the Omega one and the Naito one, but I love both of those matches. I just feel like he's just like for me because I watched him before. He just seems like I don't know. Yeah, but he's that, not like this. He's not like his character is better, but he's just like I feel like he's just not, he's just like past his prime in the ring. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. You know, and it's like, I don't know. But, I mean, if you're going to want to give the Ishii a belt and, like, start getting him, like, worked up to be, like, a, a top guy. Like, well, he's a top guy, but I mean, like, a real, like, like belt. Well, yeah, because he's, he's never been a top, top guy, like, main eventing anything or, like. Yeah, like. Like, like selling out arenas or anything like, like that. Title, title-wise, a top yeah. guy. If you're going to do that, you're going to want to give him a belt first, an intercontinental. The intercontinental, as, as you taught me, is a, a stepping stone to yeah, the. Yeah. Uh, heavyweight. That'd be a good person to beat Jericho. I mean, I guess it's good, like, I feel like Jericho would be better off in a match with Ishii than, like, a Naito or an Omega, because Omega and Naito are so fast-paced in their matches, uh-huh. such crazy bumps. Jericho being past his prime, his style would be better with an Ishii. He's just more hard-hitting and not as, like, yeah, and if you dude, if you're going to get if you're going to get one of the uh the the local wrestlers over with the western fans, why not have him beat Jericho, you Yeah. Know? Yeah. I'd be down for that, but I don't know, man. I feel like I would be fine with that, but I still want Ishii to get a title shot, and even if he loses, which he would, you know, yeah. he's not going to win it. But like the fact that he has to, he he's, he he beat his streak in the G one. How can they not acknowledge that and give him a title shot? Yeah, because I, I was apparently, I guess he beat Okada in a G one when Okada was a champion. He never got a title shot out of that, which was ridiculous. Apparently, I was reading. Yeah, so I don't know. Anything else to add to that match? Um, no, I mean we we could see out of just popular demand online, dude. Um, if if New Japan's paying attention to the online threads, what fans are saying online, dude, a lot of people are talking real big about Ishii. Yeah, real real, real nicely about him. Well, he did, he's been doing great in this tournament. Yeah, his matches have been real good. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I want to see him in some uh, with a belt in the next uh, within the next year. Remember when he was headbutting Omega like he was a pit bull? He was just like, he is a pit, he's the stone pit bull. He's the stone who's like a stone. A or bulldog, stone. stone bulldog. Wait, is bulldog. it pit bull or it's still? Pit bull. Oh, I, I think I said bulldog earlier. Like the British bulldog? Yeah, that might be why. The British bulldog's dead, dude. Why did it bring mean, the podcast down? <laughs> Whatever. British bull, bulldog junior. Yeah. Davy Boy Smith. He's junior, not dead baby. yet. And then we have our main event. Well, is, aren't people named Dave, Dave, Davey Smith or Dave Smith assholes? They're normally not nice people, and they suffer throughout life. Yeah. They get what they have coming to them. <laughs> Next, we have Ibushi versus Naito. Okay, so early on, Ibushi goes for a German off the apron to the floor, which luckily he didn't hit because I didn't want him to die. So I was like, that's good that he didn't hit that move. Like, how can you take that move? Mm-hmm. A German onto the fucking floor? Yeah, dude. But we'll... <laughs> We'll see you later, but whatever. Uh, Naito used Ibushi to destroy everything sitting on the announcer's table, which was kind of funny. He just, <laughs> like, knocked everything off. Did you watch this one? You watched this one, right? Yeah, I did. Dude, Naito was really healing it up in this one, especially to the crowd. I have... Dude, from what I've heard, like, Osaka just generally does not like Naito. Really? So, if he's... Because that's where I think the, the Dominion match was. Do you remember them booing the fuck... Out of uh, Naito while he was fighting Jericho? I don't, but... Yeah, yeah I mean, he, well, he was really playing up on it then. The, when they're not liking him. Because he was being a real dick to him, which was... I was like, I'm fine with it. Yeah, apparently, and, like, anywhere else he's, like, over there. But, like, they just boo the shit out of Naito. Well, it's cool that he's, not, well, it's cool that he's smart about not trying to still be a baby face. Yeah. You know? Um, Naito gets Bushi in an inverted figure four, which is cool. Because I don't know if I've ever seen that. Uh, during an Ibushi gives Naito a little slap fest. He slaps him around a little bit on the mat. I'm questioning if I'm calling back the right match. No, you keep going. I'm sorry. Um, half and half suplex from Ibushi drops Naito right on his fucking head. And then I just put, stop it, please. 
Stop it. Yeah, they don't. Don't kill them. <laughs> they don't. Please don't kill them. It gets worse. Um, cool reversal sequence ending with Naito hitting that uh, cradle, leg hook, tombstone, whatever the fuck it is where they hook their legs and drop a tombstone. Yeah. Dropped I- 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 That's Ibushi scary. hit hard on those, the ground. Those are scary. Yeah. Naito hits Gloria, which I haven't even seen him do this move. Yeah, well, remember, we, you, okay, you, you, it may have been you or me, we, we talked about the move. Yeah. And we didn't know what it was. Is that what it is? And then, yeah, Jen Rosen told us uh, that. Oh, that's, I remember this now. I remember that now. Mm-hmm. I remember everything. I remember us talking about the move and her saying that. Yeah, explain the move again just so I remember. <laughs> It's kind of like a side slam where they're holding him like this and they just kind of drop them. But he fucking drops them like really at an angle so they're just hitting their head in the back of their neck when they land. Looks real fucking devastating. Um, Naito hangs Ibushi on the ropes on his back. Like eh, like he's just kind of he's just kind of laying across ropes on his back and he just hits a hanging neck breaker that looks super fucking cool. Uh, Naito does a reverse Hurricane Rana from the second rope, but Ibushi lands on his feet, which was cool, but then he made that stupid fucking Ibushi face when he does that thing. He does his face sometimes. I'm like, Ibushi, you look dumb. That's the face where he's just coming and drinking cum at the same time. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was the face. That's the face you made. I've seen it plenty of times. I know what it looks like. Um, okay, so Naito is standing on the apron outside the ropes. Abushi is standing on the second rope inside the ring. In German suplexes Naito over the top rope into the ring, what I can which I can only call an attempted homicide, because the motherfucker landed right on his fucking head, and I'm like, you're gonna fucking kill him! Like stop it! Like he dude, he I, I watched and I'm like, dude, you're gonna be Takahashi. You're gonna be Takahashi. I'm like, you didn't need to do that. Like you didn't need to land like that. I'm like, oh my god. So then we have a sit down last ride power bomb to Naito, which was really cool. Bushi always hits this really hard. There's a series of finishers reverse until Naito hits a beautiful Dustino. Dustino. And Ibushi kicks out. It was a great false finish. Uh, Dustino reversed uh, a move into Naito's death, which is what I call this, which was basically a modified brain. He had him up for a suplex, right? You, I'm describing the move because uh, yeah, sure. you saw it. Yeah. He had him up for a suplex. Mm-hmm. When you do a brain buster, you do, instead of falling back, you kind of drop him on their head. Well, instead of even doing that, he dropped him on his fucking side, straight on his fucking head like I'm playing No Mercy, and it's a fake move that will kill you. And I watch this, and as it happens, I'm not exaggerating, I yell out, oh my fucking God, he's dead. I felt like <laughs> JR. Like, I'm just sitting I'm like, oh my God, and I'm just watching him. I'm like, okay, he's moving, thank God, like... What the fuck, dude? <laughs> like these, these, this was like the most. This was I'm like, this is the most dangerous match I've seen in New Japan since I started watching. Really, I've never seen a match where someone took so many fucking head bumps like that. It was ridiculous. Yeah, huh. it was. Dude, he's gonna die. <laughs> you don't even care. You're numb to it. You're the fucking problem. Yeah, it'll be fine. You're the problem. You're the reason Takahashi's dead. <laughs> People like you. Oh, I love it. Give me more. Break your neck. Break your neck. That's Gable. And I want them to do what Sick they want to do. I, I don't need them to do anything. I don't want them to do what they want to do if it's doing that. If they want to do it, let them do it. They're going to die. I don't want them to feel obligated to do it, though. Okay, dude. That's that's the, that's the where I, I, I'm in debate with it. Like, I want them to be able to do the moves that they want to do, but sometimes they want to do crazy shit because they see other people do crazy shit so they're obligated into doing crazy shit to keep up with them yeah, yeah. endangering them so is this is this making sense pause this we're gonna finish this because i have more to say about that too and then we'll get into a more dis- more deep discussion about this um ibushi hits the kamigoye and then he wins by pinfall and it's over um did you like this match this match is great i think it was as good as omega but I thought it was fucking a really, really good match. Yeah. Like a lot. Yeah. Um, I would have preferred Night to not dying, but whatever. So, I do. You think- I see what you're saying in regards to, like, they're doing over-the-top moves because everyone else is doing over-the-top moves, so it's what the fans expect, and if you don't do it, the fans don't enjoy the match as much. Yeah. 
which is Jim Cornette's main problem with wrestling is everyone keeps doing more and more crazy stuff. It's going to get to the point where people are killing themselves just to make the fans happy, and you shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. So that's a very good point. But, like, dude, like, Matt Hardy just said that he's pretty much retiring from wrestling because his, like, hip and his lower back are fusing together. Yeah, I saw, of, I saw that. Yeah. The dude's, like, 40. <laughs> like. Yeah. And he's not even doing this shit that these people are doing. Yeah. Like, you see old-time wrestlers, like, fucking, like, I don't know, like, the, N- Nikolai Volkov, who just died. Like, people like Hulk Hogan. These people, when you watch their matches now from the 80s, you're like, this is the most boring shit I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Because they're just doing normal, regular shit. These guys can't even walk half the time when they're in their 50s. Mm-hmm. People like Naito are going to be, like, 35 and fucking crippled. <laughs> and, like, I don't understand it. Like, yeah. And I'll even point, like, I was listening to the, the Alvarez podcast, and he made such a great point. He's like, dude, Naito is a guy where he is a top guy. He is like, he can be Okada, he can be an Omega, he can main event Wrestle Kingdom. He has main event at Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. He's a top, top guy, like the rock top guy in New Japan. He doesn't need to do this stuff anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So why? Like, he just must love the fans so much, he's going to do anything to make them happy. And, yeah. like, I would prefer to not see this type of shit, man. Like, uh, this is scary. Like, I watch it, and I'm like, that's really cool, but I'm also just like, dude, that's so scary. I'd rather not see it. I don't know, man. Or at least limit how much you do it. Yeah, I mean, even that, and it's like, dude, you can take... Okay, that German suplex he took from the... from the, Or even, even the final move. The brain buster where he dropped him straight on his fucking dome. All you have to do is drop it so he lands on his back a little more instead of his head. It's fine. If you adjust it a little bit, the move still gets the point across. It's devastating. And you're not dropping on the top of your head. It's far yeah. less dangerous. Like, you can just adjust them a little bit to make it easier, but they don't. Like, I don't get it. I don't understand why they don't just, like... Like, the German suplexes they take when he took from the apron. He landed right on his head. He can land on your back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why they find it necessary to, do, like, to make the move so much more dangerous. I don't know, man. I... I think I just personally have trouble seeing, like, like while I'm watching, like, because I'm already bad at taking notes to begin with, just noticing stuff like that. <laughs> like, just the little things? Like yeah, the, the little yeah. the little things, like their head hitting the mat or stuff like that. I don't know. I mean, may, I, I've been watching wrestler obviously much longer than yeah. you, so maybe I look for that stuff more, you, you know? You definitely see it more yeah. than I do, because you, you're like, oh my god, his head, I'm like, I... You're like, I don't even remember him landing on his head. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's just, yeah, I don't know, like, so there's even times where I want it because I'm like, how did he not die when I see the move <laughs> happen? I'm like, how did he do that? And then sometimes you see, like, like there was a, a spot in the Omega match where he DDT'd um, Ishii and he was, like, straight up in the air. Remember that? He took it on his head. Yeah. And it was kind of straight up and it looks really cool. And, like, you were watching, you're like, okay, he just puts his arm in a way where he's not even hitting his head. You know what I mean? But then when I rewind ones like these, I'm like, dude, you're landing on your head. How the fuck do they do it? Yeah. Like, I just don't know. Have you gone back and wa- rewatched the uh, the Takahashi injury? Yeah. Dude, it's fucking brutal. It's look bad. At. It is brutal. And what's crazy is, dude, it's like he landed literally inches wrong. Like, dude, that move, like, moves like that, like, it's no different than the move when Naito got G- German suplex on the back of his head and rolled a little bit. Yeah. It's literally inches off, and he just landed on the top instead of right here, and it's like... Yeah. It's crazy. This shit's nuts. I just, don't, I just don't want to see people like Naito just keep doing this and just break their neck. You know just, what I mean? uh, just so I have like a like a good uh, sense of what would be a little better, who's someone who performs well in New Japan that doesn't do like crazy shit like that? Dude, who... <laughs> Tanahashi... Like, re- very, very recently said, I think this was maybe in the last week or so, he goes, these people need to slow down and stop taking all these bumps on their head like this because they're just going to end, their career's going to be short and they're just going to end up, like, paralyzed. Yeah. That's Tanahashi. He's like the fucking John Cena over there. He's a huge dude. He got over huge. And I, even though I think his master's is just all right, just one line from Kevin Kelly where he mentioned how Tanahashi was like the main guy when New Japan wasn't doing well and kind of got them through that, mm-hmm. which makes me respect him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's the biggest guy ever, and he's singing you need to do this shit, and he made it without doing it just fine. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like, and it's not like his matches suck. He still yeah. has great matches, but... yeah, Dude, Omega... The majority of Omega's matches, he doesn't do shit like that. They're no, they're nowhere near as bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like 
He's so, huge. So, so Omega and Tanahashi are yeah, people who are I feel doing... Like, I feel like sometimes there's moves Omega, Omega, there's moves that happen with Omega that could be like that, but like nowhere on the level of like a Naito or even like I think a Bushi. Ones like that where they just... I don't know, man. Yeah, I think Omega does this fine. Like, I don't remember seeing spots in the match with him and Ishii where I'm like, fuck, he landed right on his head. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I don't remember... I don't. I just remember that being hard-hitting as fuck. But I don't remember stuff like that in that match, so... Yeah. yeah. All right, we, I dwelled on this long enough. We need to move on. I mean, it's a big topic to be talking it about. It's not, it's not... It's like something that's not worth being addressed. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I'm glad we did it. Yeah, me too. I have no regrets. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to look out for that. I mean, there's definitely I've noticed the opposite. I've noticed times where there's like the tombstones, and I'm like, that guy's a mile off the ground right now. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, I notice when it looks really bad. <laughs> if I could go back in time, I would have asked out Shannon Jones in high school. That's a regret I have. If I could go back. I do and, have regrets. I'd go back and save Sugar Bear. What is that? Is it from the Sugar Smack from cereal? Deadpool. Oh, <laughs> I got confused. It's a, uh, it's what, a frog. Oh, fuck, what's his name? I can't remember his real name. The the character with no powers. In this, uh, dude, I only watched it I once. I, I know. Remember. I need. I need. I can't wait till that comes out on Blu-ray. Oh, yeah. I might be watching that again this week. Actually, going to the drive-in. That might be one. They of the still ones have I see. that. Yeah. Hmm. Um. All right. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll uh, maybe after watching like you know another few months and like you do watch that we'll have the discussion again and you'll be like you, you may yeah. see it you may not I'll, yeah, we'll see what happens I'll try to look for it yes yeah, we'll see what we'll see what happens okay and uh, we're going to I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and save this last one too real quick so please hold we're back baby we weren't we didn't even leave baby all right. Here we're, it's time for the last night. This is Dave's bonus night. Hey, you technically were supposed to have one more night anyway. Remember originally when we fucked it up? Oh, yeah. I had like, <laughs> I, had a, I did a lot more. It worked out at the way we planned, I guess. A, I yeah, it was only like, what, two more, right? Yeah, I think I had like, I think I had uh, ten and you had eight, I think is what it ended up turning yeah. out to be, something like that. Okay, this is A Block. This is night 15, August 5th. Starting off with Bad Luck Fail. Versus Yoshihashi. Bad luck, Faji. Bad luck, Faji. Versus <laughs> Yoshihashi. Uh, Loa trips up Hashi early on and then suplexes him while Fale distracts the ref. So Loa is just immediately being a dick. Uh, they have a match. Uh, Fale hits a big splash. Uh, the grenade move gets reversed. Loa distracts Hashi when he goes up top and that uh, slows him down. Some moves happen, and then Hashi pushes Fale into Loa, knocking him off the apron. So Loa is out again. It's basically Hashi just fighting him off, trying to keep him out of interfering in the match. Um, Loa comes in, and Hashi fights him off, throwing him back out. Hashi gets Fale in an arm bar, and then Tama comes out with a chair, and they jump Hashi, Yoshi Hashi by DQ. Shocking finish. Shocking. No one was expecting this finish. It's DQ. It was like a finish out of nowhere, like an RKO. Do, do we have a DQ count? I'm, I was thinking about that earlier. Well, we should we should do that. I'm sure if we just look it up online, we'll find yeah. it easily. But um, so next we have a Suzuki versus Page. Uh, as soon as Page gets in the ring, he runs right at Suzuki and just boots him right in the fucking face. Like as soon as it starts. <laughs> I watched this match. Did you watch this? I one? watched this one. I wanted I wanted to see. It. I mean, dude, I love Suzuki now, and I love. Uh, yeah. I want to see more Page. Yeah, me too. Um. So Paige goes right for Suzuki, hits him in the face. There's some brawling outside, and Paige does a moonsault off the stage, which was kind of cool. That was crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, the tree. Okay, I just want to... Oh, a little sidebar here. The treatment of the refs in New Japan is just getting more and more ridiculous, and it stood out even more in this match. Like, in this match, when they're outside, El Desperado is just holding the ref and detaining him. I didn't even notice that. He's just holding him, and they won't even let him do it. He's just holding him back and stopping him. And then after that... Uh, there's a point where Suzuki starts going towards the ref and is just like pushing him around and manhandling like he's gonna beat his ass. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what the like? They need to do something about this. Like, yeah. this, it's getting it's getting so ridiculous. Where like every fucking match, why should they listen to the ref? Why shouldn't the Tongas do what they do, dude? Half I the time you get away with it, dude. If Suzuki became a ref, like, at, like what, what if they just, when he retires, to stay involved still, they just have him be a ref? 
That's not a bad idea. He'd be a tough ref. Yeah. Okay, here's the thing. I don't know, and you wouldn't either, no. if it's always been like this with refs where they're just like disrespectful to them and push them around. Yeah. I don't know. But here's the thing. If it hasn't always been like that, maybe this is something they just started doing because this would be cool. Remember how you were talking about there were rumors about the Tongas getting kicked out of New Japan? Yeah. Well, they could do something where they address all this shit. They're like, they kick the tongas out and they tell all the uh, the wrestlers, this stuff with the refs is done. It's stopping. From mm-hmm. now on, if you put your hands on the ref, you're DQ'd. You know what I mean? So they kind of yeah, yeah. tie it all together maybe. That would be cool. I just think they need to do something because it's getting to the point where like, dude, people just push through. They do it like every match. And I'm like, what does the, it mean to be a ref? Yeah. They have no authority. You know what I mean? And this match just stood out just when Suzuki's just like all over him and pushing him. I'm like, this is getting silly. So yeah. it really stood out in this one for me. What if, uh, hmm. Yeah, I, I've definitely heard a lot of people come up with that, a lot of different shows and websites claim to <coughs> come up with that idea themselves. With the Tom is leaving? Well, they, yeah, they didn't, I mean, they didn't brag about it. They're like, oh, we came up with this idea ourselves. But, like, they, they, they were like, yeah, I think this is the direction they're heading. I mean, if they do... Hopefully they do do something about the ref stuff because that would I mean that's the perfect opportunity to do it. Yeah. Like new and especially wasn't there like they were talking about it that last big pay per view wasn't there like this new guy that took over for New Japan for the Western audience or something? Yeah, the new president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japan. Like he could he could come out like all right we're gonna do something about this because it's getting out of control. But, yeah, um, I I really think if any if any company is ever gonna put their. Uh, Put their their dukes up against WWE. It's definitely going to be New Japan. I agree. They, need, they, yeah, they definitely need to get a stronger Western foothold. But yeah, it, it definitely, uh, or especially with the uh, oh, what the I I I lost it. Go the on. MSG show coming. Sure, yeah, let's <laughs> go with that. Sure. Okay, so uh, they have wrestling a while. Uh, there's lots of squaring off the forearms and whatnot. <laughs> is, is that the knit you're talking about? They have wrestling a while. That's one of them. <laughs> there's lots of the whole like forearm, forearm and whatnot stuff like that. Uh, Buckshot Lariat uh, Page reverses the Gotch Pile Driver into the rite of passage and wins by pinfall. Dude, is it rite of passage like kind of like was a little more uh, poetic here with Suzuki being a a long time New Japan wrestler and kind of representing one of the. Uh, Head, being a head faction member of, of New, in, in New Japan, it was a big win. It was it was quite the the rite of passage because I, I feel like this is definitely stuff like this is definitely what's putting him over. Do you think that's why he has a move called rite of passage? Is because he's getting a big push? Uh, that and he uh, his boots, you know. Yeah, they're made for walking. Yeah, he's, he's getting shot up straight to the moon. Yeah, or over like Grover or something. Yeah, he's over the Grover moon. He's getting that. Moon, he's getting that moon push. He's get. He's getting the Ember moon push. He's getting that moon push. The, gro- coming. the, the Grover moon. Did I go over two matches already on here? Jesus. Yeah, you uh, you suck. Oh yeah. Um. All right. Now, the third match we got Jay White versus uh, Togi Makabe. Uh, they're outside early on, and Jay is throwing Makabe into the guardrail in front of the commentators. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Rocky's yelling at Jay, and Jay just goes, Be quiet, Rocky. Some of us have to work for a living. <laughs> Which is really <laughs> funny. <laughs> uh, they wrestle match fight in the ring a lot. Uh, Jay is trying to remove Makabe's chest with chops and clotheslines. They were getting pretty brutal. Just fucking tear it right off. Yeah. Is it as bad as Daniel Bryan's chest? That no, I don't think anything yeah. will be that bad. His chest was literally made of hamburger It was meat. bad. <laughs> uh, Makabe goes for the spider German, but Jay holds on and Makabe hits a belly to belly. I mean, they, they do this spot too much. This is the third time I've seen this in this tournament. And I don't have an, I don't have an issue with moves being done multiple times. But this is a reversal spot. So it's getting really weird that, like, over and over again, the guy keeps going for the same type of reversal and doing the same move. Which, which, which... If you were paying attention under your stupid mouth thing, (laughs) you would have fucking heard me. After you started on the ramp part, I I started paying attention. What was the move, uh, reverse? Um, he has, he's going for the the German spider (laughs) suplex thing. It's, it's annoying. (laughs) You're being annoying, Gable. (laughs) It, it, uh, I was investigating because it felt weird. I'm sorry. Oh, cool. He's going for the German spider suplex off the top, and then the guy holds on, and then he turns around and he bellies the belly. And after he like 
holds on and won't let go. I, I like, don't remember it. Uh, dude, this is literally the third time I've seen it, and the third time I've made a note, and I'm like, okay, like stop doing the same like <laughs> sequence over and over again. Um, Makabe misses the King Kong knee drop. From the, it was the King Kong knee drop from the top he, rope. He missed that in the other one too. Yeah, it was actually the exact same sequence. It was after doing that belly to belly. He misses it. Are you just trying to make me mad? Is no. that your goal? No, I can't unnotice it. I'm sorry. Cool. Uh, Jay pulls red shoes in front of him to block Makabe from going from coming off the top rope. Um, White brings a chair in, and Makabe clotheslines it right into his face, which wasn't very nice. Uh, Red Shoes gets knocked down, and White throws the chair hard into Makabe's face. It's a Blade Runner, and White wins by pinfall. So there's that. Jay White. Can you do an New Zealand accent, Dave? No. Yeah. No. Nor would I try. Um, after the match, which was pretty funny, White's going the wrong way to leave, and then a young lion's like, no, you got to go this way. So then, like... White like puts his arm around the young line and they're like all smiling, going to leave, and then he just starts beating the shit oh, out I of them. I did, I, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, that was funny. I, th- I found that quite humorous. I like Jay White a lot. I, yeah, I definitely like him in this heel yeah. position he's in. He's, he's really good at it. He is a he is a he's a nice dirty heel. He's a good like, dirty heel, like a size nine dirty heel. Yeah, he's a dirty heel. Uh, next we have Mike Elgin versus Tanahashi. It's the match that's next. Yeah, I watched this one and the one after, so I might be able to recall some spots if you ask me. Oh, cool. Thank God. Thank goodness. Yeah, thank God. I was concerned. Lordy B. I was concerned. Uh, there was some great storytelling by the commentators here. Uh, they were kind of saying why the guys that can't win the tournament should still try to win their matches. Um, I don't know if you heard them talking about this. No, I'm, I'm interested. Because they were like, oh, well, if they beat, like, for example, if Elgin beats Tanahashi, if Tanahashi wins the tournament, then he should be in line to the title go against him for that contract. Sense. Like, the contract. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I was like, well, that's a good point. Like, so some of these matches still mean something, so, so that's kind of cool. I, I have a question here, Dave. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, do, do they have to, like, defend their contract, or how's that? How, is it, like, a basically, like, a temporary yeah, belt i think they i think they do i've heard a number of people say that they like they have to defend it when is uh which i think it's kind of dumb if like you look at it in the sense that tanashi wins the g1 right <laughs> he has this contract <laughs> he goes to the next pay-per-view and like jay white just beats him and wins i'm like well then why do i win the fucking tournament <laughs> <laughs> he loses it to yoshihashi he, lo- yeah, he loses the tournament someone loses the tournament and just wins it in a singles match like that's kind of dumb <laughs> good news mr yoshihashi who was sad about being this or uh mathematically eliminated <laughs> yeah not from the rematch apparently <laughs> later yeah so yeah i don't understand how that makes a lot of sense but whatever We'll see. I guess we'll watch and see what happens. They said mathematically eliminated a lot, huh? They do. They say that a lot. And half the time they're wrong. Um, the wrestlers do wrestling a lot. They're, <laughs> he did it again. They're dragon screwing each other here. Uh, Tanahashi. <laughs> this is a true story. <laughs> Tanahashi dragon screws Elgin from the top turnbuckle, too. That was a cool spot. Yeah. Dude, Tanahashi skinned the cat. You see him skin the cat? What does that mean? You know what skinning the cat is? No, this sounds hot. All right, cool. Oh. Uh, the match really, what? I thought it was like like slang for like like shaving. <laughs> shaving uh, never mind. No, it's a move that happens in the match. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you what it is, though. Oh, no. It's whenever they're hanging on the... <laughs> what the fuck was I watching? I was watching one of the Ring of Honor shows where <laughs> fucking... What's his name? Um, my favorite guy from the kingdom. I don't remember his name. Matt Taven. Matt Taven. He goes to skin the cat and it doesn't work. It was really... It's when you're hanging from the outside and you lift yourself up over into the ring. Oh, It's called okay. skin the cat. Like, did you watch the Ring of Honor with the kingdom where they defended their titles in the six-man? Um, was it recent? Yeah. No. Dude, he goes to do that, but he's wearing both his belts. And when he lifts himself up, he can't do it and just kind of messes up and falls back down. <laughs> <laughs> so then he takes him off and does it again. Like, I don't know if it was on purpose, but it looked really funny. He fucked up. I mean, Matt, Matt Taven's hilarious. Maybe we can see him in New Japan soon. Oh, yeah. You know who was in New Japan, like, not too long ago? I think Sammy yeah. Callahan. That's too bad. I don't like him. I, just, I, I was just going through some old, uh, like, images, and I saw him on there. And I was like, hmm, that's... I, didn't I don't know like, he, I don't I like didn't, that guy. I didn't know he was there. I don't like him. 
I don't know. Mean. No, I don't know enough about uh, it. The match really picked up in the last five minutes. This was one where it was kind of like just man. It kind of got a lot better towards the end. Yeah. Dude, well, uh, uh, I'll wait till after this match. Oh, uh, Tanahashi no Tana, Tanahashi no sells a buckle bomb. Everyone must know sell things. Uh, Tanahashi hits the twist and shout, then a sling blade. Mike catches Tanahashi's crossbody, rolls through. There's a great series of reversals. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Uh, Mike hits a couple of stiff lariats and splash mountain, but Tanahashi kicks out. So that was a good false finish. Agreed. Uh, Mike hits a buckle bomb and then goes for a power bomb, but Tanahashi reverses. But then, unfortunately, fucks up the finish. Like... He was clearly supposed to reverse the power bomb into a small package, yeah. but he kind of just fell on the mat and then just kind of did the small package I, from there. I, dude, I think I it think, really took away from the momentum of it. I, I think that might be Mike's fault. I think he was supposed to like bend down or he didn't roll, roll down with it. Him. And I don't think he. I think his feet got caught up and he didn't roll. Yeah. So I he, could see that. It makes sense. So he kind of repositioned his feet and then and then fell. Yeah. It definitely took away from the momentum of the finish. It was kind of real fast paced, and you're just like, oh. Dude, that, that made me forget the fucking end of the Omega match. Did you. <laughs> even though he counted the three, his one shoulder is clearly very up. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I, I've seen worse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I know exactly I, what you're talking about because I was like, his shoulder isn't all the way down. but And it didn't even roll up to the three because Ishii was kind of rolling really hard. He was kind of pulling really hard. Yeah. And then it kind of lifted it in the three. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely noticed that, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forget to talk about that earlier. Dude, and... I was listening somewhere, and someone said that um, they commented online. They thought that Omega was actually supposed to win that match. <laughs> and the finish got fucked up or something. So they just had issue. No, they said that Omega was supposed to win the match because his, he got so busted up and was bleeding, they just stopped it early and just had him lose. I don't think I'm so. I'm like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, that's so stupid. <laughs> People online are dumb, Gable. Yeah, I, I'm kind of getting frustrated thinking about that. Why would... Why, they would change, like, the entire fucking Dude, his thing. lip's bleeding. Have Ishii win. Yeah. Was <laughs> it actually... I, was it actually hanging? I just... Dude, it looked I like clotted blood to me. I rewound it, and it looked like part of his lip was kind of hanging off. Like, it looked like what happened was it got busted, and a part of it was just kind of over here, because it got stitched back. You get right. stitches. Hear but. me out. So, even if they had to finish the match... Why wouldn't they just have Ishii take the pinfall then? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it was real. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Whatever. It was really stupid. That, that's the that's the biggest part of the flaw. If they had to end the match, why not have the there's, correct guy there, win? There's no reason to change the winner. Yeah. Because someone's injured. Like, I mean, unless he's paralyzed and can't pin someone. Instantly debunked. Yeah. And now we have our main event. Uh, uh, Kazushika Okada versus Evil. Uh, it starts off with some big moves. Everything is evil gets reversed right, right, right early on. Uh, they go outside. Evil puts the evil's the one that puts the chair on the head in baseball bats. Or is that someone else? Yeah. Where they they <laughs> hold it above their head sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, evil puts the chair on Okada's head, but then he just throws him chair first into the post, which is kind of cool. Uh, they're both standing on the apron. Evil jumps off with Okada driving into the guardrail. That was cute. Evil lifts up Okada in a suplex. <laughs> this is really funny. He lifted him up for a suplex and then put his legs on Red Shoes' shoulder yeah. and used Red Shoes to do the magic killer, which I thought was pretty I, funny. I thought that was... Uh, even even the uh, commentators uh, uh, mentioned how he, he must have been holding on to that idea for a while. Because yeah. that's a that, that, definitely a really uh, easy thing to do with the way they have that move set up. Yeah. That, like, a mat, like... I wonder if they've done it before. Well, quite frankly, ever... you can do the exact same thing if you just put his legs on the rope. You don't need to use the rest. Shut the fuck up, Dave. <laughs> I'm saying. No, no one likes a, a negative Nancy. No one likes a sneaky Pete. No, no one likes a bear in the... Sometimes you get the bear. And Sometimes get, the bear shoots you. you, you I can't you, remember you how it went. play the bear. Oh, you play with the bear. F fiddle, so fiddle faddle. Fiddle sticks. Tiddlywinks. Fiddle sticks. All right, next. Uh, everything is evil gets reversed again. Evil ducks a Rainmaker and then delivers his own Rainmaker to Okada. It was a good false finish. Uh, Rocky says this next move is like a half and half suplex, but I'm pretty sure Rocky was wrong because I just saw one earlier and it wasn't the same thing, but whatever. Mm. It was like kind of a half Nelson chicken wing type thing. Mm. So I don't know what it's called, but it definitely wasn't a half and half suplex. Take that, Rocky, you fuck. Yeah, listen to our show. Shout us out. Yeah. <laughs> but I dumped Okada right in his head. Another good false finish. 
Evil goes for everything is evil, but it's reversed into a Rainmaker by Okada, which is reversed into a Rainmaker by Evil, that's then reversed into everything is evil by Okada. And then Evil kicks out. Yeah. Great series of reversals. Tombstone by Okada. Okada with a Rainmaker, reversed into everything is evil, reversed into a Rainmaker again by Okada, but then Evil clotheslines Okada so he doesn't hit the Rainmaker. Are these, uh, are th- are these false finishes getting you? Nah. I, I think two of them got me. Like, they, the ones that were just a big series of reversals with finishes kind of weren't. There were a couple that did. Like, um. Dude, when Okada hit that Everything's Evil, I'm like, man, that's it. <laughs> are, you being, are you being sarcastic? No. Oh, wait, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, me too. Yeah. That was a good false finish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How's your arm here, dude? It's there, man. Cool, dude. Evil, evil uh, hits everything. Well, evil goes for everything's evil again, which gets reversed into the spinning rainmaker. Then another rainmaker, and then Okada wins by pinfall. Dude, the spinning rainmaker is the most insanely ingenuitive thing you can do to an old move to make it cool again. He spun, dude. It's so crazy. He spun. Now I'm being sarcastic. He spun. <laughs> I do. I don't. Know, I think the spin looks very unnatural and forced. Some of us is ingenuitive as taking a knee to the face and running and calling it a V trigger. I I mean, I'm just fucking. It's still. With you. I was gonna say it makes sense because you're running and have more momentum. Yeah, well, he's spinning and gets more momentum. <laughs> yeah, but it looks it looks like you're an idiot. He holds his arm out and spins really fast and gets more momentum. That's what he he's does. A tornado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should call it the uh, the 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 fucking Wizard of Oz because it'll take you to Oz whenever you go in that tornado of an That was spin. really dumb. <laughs> I was trying for something dumb there. I don't worry? think you were. I think it was an accident. How do you feel about that? I, I, I was expecting criticism nonetheless. Fuck you. WWF. What are the standings? Oh. Um... They're the like, the section that's like right in between like the the front row seating and like the the uh, the the bleachers. I've never heard that called a standing. <laughs> I don't know what that means. All right, so A block we have Tanahashi with fourteen points, Jay White and Okada tied with twelve points, twelve. Evil Suzuki tied with eight. Fale, Page, and Elgin all have six. Makabe and Hashi both have four. Who are you picking for A block? All right, so there's what one one match left in A block, or yep, and then two in B block. Yep. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm probably going to have to pick. Who's the last last match for? Uh, who's who are the 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 main? Tanahashi events? and Okada are fighting, and then White's fighting Evil. So in order for White to, in White order, holds tiebreakers over both of them. So if White wins his match and they tie, he wins because he beat both of them already. So or if, if Okada wins, right? If Okada wins. If Okada wins and Jay White wins. Jay, White wins. If Okada wins and White loses, then Okada wins. Okay. Dude, that's interesting as fuck. I am going to go with who's who's White fight. Evil. Oh, uh, I, shit. I am going to go with... I don't think it... Okay, I think that it's going to be Tanahashi. But my prediction is going to be... I think Jay White's going to win with the tiebreakers. That's what I think is going to happen. The only reason I don't... Well, okay. The reason I think it's going to be Tanahashi is because like it would be... I don't think that they would put White versus whoever's in B-Block in the finals. Because I don't think White's going to main event Wrestle Kingdom. I don't think he's doing that yet. So, I think if they put White in the finals, everyone would be like, White has no chance, and it wouldn't make the match as exciting. That's why I don't think they put him, but I'm still going to pick him anyway, because I think it would be cool. So, I'm picking White with tiebreakers. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to I'm gonna put White there as well. It just seems so cool. And, uh, let me see that B block. So, there's two. I, I, I could pro- obviously give you a better guess if we waited another... Show. So for B block we have Omega with twelve, Abushi and Naito tied with ten, uh, Sonata and Saber both at eight, Goto and Ishii both at six, 
Tonga and Robinson both at four. Yano at two. Um, Dude, the biggest chaos member in B block is what Goto, huh? There's not or no Ishi. Ishii's yeah. also chaos, huh? Yeah. Um, Omega's fighting Ibushi. I'm whoever's gonna... Naito, whoever Naito's fighting, I guess it doesn't really matter. He might be fighting Ishii. He hasn't fought him yet, right? Omega. Wait, what? Naito. Naito hasn't fought Ishii yet, has he? I don't think. I think he's fighting Ishii in his in his next match. But there's two matches left for this, so yeah, I don't. Uh... I if I had to guess, I'm gonna say Ibushi. I think Ibushi as well. I think Ibushi's gonna. I think I think Omega's gonna have 14 because he's not losing to Yano. I think Ibushi's gonna win his next one. I think Ibushi's gonna tie it, and then he's obviously gonna have the tiebreaker because he's gonna beat Omega. I think that's what's gonna happen. I think it's gonna be Omega with 14, Ibushi with 12, and then Ibushi's gonna win the last two points and have the tiebreaker. I Interesting. Think. It's hard to say. <clears throat> yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah. And uh, between <laughs> between uh, between Jay White and Abushi, who do you think wins that? Abushi. Yeah. Me too. And keep in mind too, they can. This person can always lose their contract before Wrestle Kingdom. So, dude, it's hard to say, man. Very hard to say. I hope Jay White wins it. That'd be cool. Jay White wins it, but then loses the the contract to uh, Mike Elgin. Whatever. Goto. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sonata. Dude, th- this is why I love New Japan. Tama it's Tama. So exciting. I don't know what's gonna happen. I have no idea. I couldn't Minoru even guess. Suzuki. Roman Reigns. <laughs> Togi Maccabee. Roman Reigns. Bad Luck Felly. Roman Reigns. <laughs> the juice box. What a douche. Roman Reigns. My name's Juice Robinson. I'm going to give you the juice box. <laughs> douche. I'm going to stick a macaroni in my hat. Omega should have a, a move called the Omega Man. <laughs> uh, I think his Twitter handle is Omega Man. Yeah, I think, it, I think you're right. Yeah. Hmm. All right, that's that. Those are our predictions as of right are, now. These blocks are interesting. We'll give you our next prediction on our next show whenever we tell you who won the finals. All right, let's. Uh, it'll be let's, easy to do that. Let's, uh, what do they say in wrestling when they want to finish the match? Uh, let's. Uh, um, let's. Uh, let's. Let's uh, take it home. Let's take it home. Let's hit go a, home. They tell them to go home. Let's go home. Let's hit a, go home. Let's hit a home run. All right, it's time for the go home spot. The go home spot. That's where we give our uh, our uh, our plugs. Oh yeah, uh, the let's... go home spot is our plugs. Make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Breakroom BS. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Breakroom BS One, and then you comment on our Twitter and comment on our YouTube. And, and make Instagram. sure you watch us everywhere else too. Make sure you go on our Instagram and comment on all the funny things I post. And make sure you. Hey, uh, you. What? What? They're funny, right? They gotta be me. Yeah. What's it? What? What? Gable does the Instagram. That's why it's subpar. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why there's an update every three weeks sometimes. Because <laughs> Gable fucking does it. Update, update. Hey, I mean, I came up with our new logo one night. Make sure you listen on Anchor. Yes. <laughs> we never tell them to listen on Anchor. Oh, yeah, listen on Anchor. Listen on Dude, Anchor. An- they're, they're, Anchor's, Anchor's fun. I can great. add music and stuff they're on it. doing there. great things to But us. then when it exports out of Anchor, then... Uh, the music goes away. I can't wait to meet all you guys at the Starcast and all in. It's gonna be so fun to say hello. No one's listening. Yeah. Hey Jen, are you going to all in <laughs> or, or Starcast? Is Jen Rose and all in? Is Jen Rose and all in, or is she Starcast? What does that mean? I don't know. All right, we're gonna go now. Flips all out. He's having an all party. All right, you guys, goodbye and good night and stuff. Say something. Ah. Uh,